you know, thanks for what you do with your podcast and all the rest. Uh, you're doing a great job. Hope everybody keeps tuning in. You get a lot of good info, a lot of insights, understandings of how to get strong, how to stay strong, how to use your strength. You do a great job, dude. <laughs> you make things better than they are in real life, I think. Yeah. If you don't follow Massonomics, y'all do it. Social media, uh, website, everything. Massonomics. Yeah. Welcome, everyone, for episode 377 of the Massonomics Podcast. If you're watching along live on YouTube, you notice I jumped up out of my chair real quick and jumped back in. I made the classic rookie mistake of leaving the overhead light on. Can't be leaving me. that light on. Oh, Been so there, done got, that. Last minute. At the last minute, I thought something's off here, and I got that light off. And we are back for 377 after a long layover of not recording. You know, your your podcast feed hasn't been disrupted. We've had an episode, new episode out every week, of course, just like always and forever. But it's been a while since we've recorded, so it'll fun be fun to get it's back. It's been a while. Out. Yeah. <laughs> and, <laughs> ah, yeah, classic. <laughs> stained. Uh. Stained, yeah. Is that, uh, that's... Uh, <laughs> What's the lead singer of Stain? Dude, I, uh, he, he's on his own now. He does country music. Uh, it, for real? Oh, yeah. Really? He has for uh, yeah, Aaron Lewis? for quite a while, I think, actually. Mm, okay. Well, I, I, Tanner, Aaron Lewis, Tanner? Is that yeah, something? Aaron Lewis. There you go. Um, big Coke Heaft, Massonomics uh, supporter, friend of the podcast, went to an Aaron Lewis concert last year, if I remember right. So, hmm. Wow. No idea. <laughs> Yeah, Aaron Lewis. Learn something new. There you go. It's been a while. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the shit seems to disappear. <laughs> when I'm with you, ever they are. <laughs> it's kind of borderline, almost in that like Creed thing where you can sort of just yell. Yeah. Like <laughs> that's it, it. Like when you sang that one uh, little word or whatever, it just it re- really reminded me of Creed. Actually, for a second, I had to. <laughs> Uh, just or, of what this I is how you <laughs> remind me. <laughs> uh, okay, my name's Tanner. Did I say that yet? I don't know. My name's Tommy. <laughs> okay, episode 377. We've got a banger of an episode. Got a lot to tell you about, but first, before we told you about some of the things coming up in the episode, I wanted to let you know this particular episode is brought to you by our good, close, personal friends over at the Strength Co. The Strength Co. makes Made in America, veteran-owned, uh, high-quality iron plates, the best iron plates that you your money can buy. They work great for a home gym, commercial gym, massonomics gym, any kind of gym you could think of that needs plates. This is the kind of plates you need. They've become the go-to plates of massonomics gym. Uh, people walk in, and even though they're in the back room, people are just, like, immediately drawn to them. It's almost like uh, an out-of-body experience where you're like, <laughs> Where your chest <laughs> comes up and you're just sucked. You're just levitating. You just you glide off just slightly above ground and yeah. you're just literally magnet magnetized sucked to the, the borderline plates. religious experience. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, that's how much a go-to plates they are. They are our favorite plates, and they're our favorite plates because they're the best plates. Head over to the strength.co, check them out. Check out their barbell collars and everything else that they got to go along with it and some merchandise and that sort of stuff too. Check them out at the Strength Co. That was that was expertly done, Tanner. It was like you never Thank even you. took a week off. I read this read the <laughs> script to perfection on that one. Uh today's show is also brought to you by Barefoot Shoes. Most shoes harm your mobility by over restricting your foot's natural movement. Barefoot shoes are designed with minimal restrictions so your feet can move the way they're supposed to. Move with more strength and confidence in every step. Barefoot Shoes was founded by Chris Duffin, who attributes proper foot biomechanics as foundational to his success in squatting squatting and deadlifting over 1,000 pounds for reps. He helped create the company to provide a minimalist shoe that can be worn for anything from deadlifts to walking your dog. Go to www.barefoot.shoes to check out the best minimalist shoes available. And while you're there, make sure to use code MASSONOMICS to save 10%. On your next order, that's barefoot.shoes. Code Massonomics is going to save you 10%. Thank you, Barefoot. Thanks, Barefoot. You know, we always, beginning of every episode, I like to talk about, we like to talk about how much we have to talk about in the episode. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it's more true than other times. And 
Today it is as true as it gets. Oh, we have we a could, lot. We could probably record a five hour episode on our own right now. We've had so much stuff happen, you know. We have a lot to run down on this one. I mean, topics to include but not limited to um, you know, our supporting member mailing that went out here this last week that people have been enjoying. Oh, God. Got, I actually already forgot about that. There's so many things. <laughs> That's uh, our new competition announcement, our contest, the uh, where everyone can get involved and everyone can win. That's the big announcement this episode, I think. We've got uh, Big Brittany Diamond coming on as a guest in this episode. We've got Florida News, Taco John News, Cracks, Apple, Cologne. I'm just saying <laughs> words just, now. It's just like word, yeah, it's just words <laughs> at this point. But they all are words from our actual to-do list. Yeah. <laughs> uh, supporting our supporting members. Uh, so much stuff this week. I don't even know. I don't even know if we'll, there's any, there's no chance we're going to get to all of this, is there? Well, we could, but we'd have to give the really short version for a lot of these things, so. Yeah, and you, if there's anything where you, we, you've come accustomed to not getting from, uh, from us, it's the short version of <laughs> no. just about anything. <laughs> that's right. Go First along, thing baby. I would mention that's not even on the list is make sure to head over to our YouTube channel and subscribe if you're not. Uh, last week, we had a Kind of a fun video giving a rundown on the equipment we've got over the last two months. But the video that just uploaded today, I love. I think it's so fun. I don't know what the title is. It's the, the uh, blind barbell test video. Yeah, but bar, yeah, barbell guessing game, I believe, is yeah. what the YouTube video is called. Yes, the barbell guessing game video where uh, a few of us down at Mass Dynamics Gym did a blindfolded our everyone, and we had to guess just based on feel of knurling what bar it was that they were, uh, they were holding. And it was a lot of fun and I think that video is really cool it was and I was watching it and you know we were laughing a lot in the video and while I was while I was editing it I was laughing a lot again and I do miss it because to me that was just exactly what going to the gym was like it was just you laugh that much and then you go do your set like you turn it on for 30 seconds and then you just go right back to laughing and being dumb and that can go on if you want to be at the gym for hours that's how it is just the entire time you're at the gym yeah, you know? like we filmed that on a Saturday and that is very much what Saturdays feel like when you're down there, yes. you know, that is what a Saturday at mass. That <laughs> is a Saturday at mass and gym really is what that feels like. We did have just to justify it uh, is not just us saying it. We have several, several of the fellas in the discord crew right now, you know, big Andrew weighing in several of them saying that that's their favorite video that we've done so far. And it might be my favorite video that we've done, you know, over this last few months of, of pumping videos out. I just, just, I watched it, you know, you pub you edited it and put it, put it out there. And I watched it twice. I'm like, both times I'm like, Oh, that was so fun. And just, uh, it almost makes me feel like I was one of the gang <laughs> and I even was one of the gang. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. It gives me the illusion of being one of the gang, even when I really was one of the gang. Uh -huh. <laughs> Gives you that out of body experience, <laughs> but we did talk about it. It did. We both said after we got the video done and watched it that it reminded us of super training videos way back in the day, where like it was just ago. a lot of guys hanging out and lifting and having fun while they were doing it. So, yeah. <laughs> so ch check that out and make sure to smash our knurled subscribe button when you're over there. <laughs> it's knurled for your pleasure. Okay. Do you, should we talk about the competition that's coming up or do we save that? Uh, you know, that's like the heavy hitter. I think. Yeah. Maybe we should get that out front because yeah. we might just get carried away with too many other things. And yeah, that's what I'm worried about too. So that is the big announcement. And this is tied into so, somewhat tied into the, the mailing, the crew mailing that went out. We've been seeing everyone share that on Instagram. Uh, you got your uh, official Jefferson deadlift history letter. That went out to all of our supporting members. We sent up, mailed out uh, well over 300 of those things. Uh, so I had to we had to buy a lot of stamps at the post office to mail out all those envelopes. But I think we, for the most part, successfully stuffed everything in those this time. That's supposed to be get go in them. I haven't gotten too many messages yet of people that didn't, you know, were missing a letter. You didn't or accidentally whatever. slip like hundreds into a few of them. No, not. Uh, no, but I do like somebody shared their big Eddie shared his where he had like an extra $52 bills in his, um, we'll leave that up to your interpretation, whether he did that or it really showed up that way, but someone did it where they had to have had a, like $10,000 in there. Did you see that one? No. They had stacks of hunt. They, they, it had to have been at least five grand oh, of hundred dollar bills in there. I didn't see that. No. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I hope I didn't do that one on accident. Yeah. Just blindly one day sleepwalking. Yeah. Got a bunch uh, but of everyone got out. those. And the limited edition stickers, you know, those stickers only went out to um, supporting members, to crew members, so that 
would have been like the two dollar bill Jefferson mm-hmm. deadlift sticker, and then actually an old callback. That, that two dollar bill is a callback. That's the liner of the lift shorts three pockets for yeah. anyone that doesn't know, and then. The JDL, Jefferson Deadlift League, that's never been a sticker before. That's an old shirt that we only ever made like 50 of mm-hmm. uh, maybe about five years yeah, ago when we yeah. put that in a sticker I always for the do first forget time. that that was a shirt. I do. I have that shirt, so that's why mm. I rem- you know, that one sticks out well to me because I do still occasionally wear that one in my rotation. Um, so you got the limited edition stickers, the the fun letter, which you haven't read it yet. If it, yours hasn't showed up, check out that letter. It's got a very interesting, elaborate history of the Jefferson Deadlift. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and um, then, of course, an actual $2 bill. So who says it doesn't pay to be a Massonomic supporting member? Yeah, you're losing money not signing up. And actually, while we're at it, we should also say thank you to everyone that signed up because uh, things were going kind of crazy there for a while with all of the new members joining. It was it was really awesome seeing all the people getting in on. Yeah, we, we had a lot of new members joining. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, so then this leads into the contest. Oh, for anyone that doesn't know, I have a, an assistant right now in the, in the Massonomics podcast recording studio. Uh, Tommy, maybe you should get started on explaining what's going on, what the start of the contest is here. Okay. So after lots and lots of careful scheming and planning, we're ready to announce the new Jefferson deadlift competition that was teased in the mailer that went out to all the supporting members and This would be, this is kind of a return. This is a return of the Jefferson deadlift competition. We did one a few years ago, but it's back and it's better than ever. And here's the details for you. We'll have this all on Instagram. So, because there's a lot here, you'll, you'll forget some of it, but it'll all be on Instagram so you can see it again. But the Jefferson deadlift competition is going to start June 29th and run through July 10th. So what's it give you? How many days are in June? 30? Tanner, you there? I can't unmute. No, you muted, Tanner? Yeah, I can't mute. Still can't hear you. <laughs> Did you hit the mute button? <laughs> yeah, but you you I can, you won't allow you have to allow me. Hmm. I can't hear I can't hear Tanner. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> um okay. So, uh the the contest will run June 29th through July 10th and we want Jefferson deadlift videos. So, we are going to um uh, put this on Instagram. All we want is you to post a Jefferson deadlift and the video has to be 30 seconds or less, which I mean, it's Instagram. That's how it goes. And we're going to just see how many awesome videos we can get out of this. We'd, we'd love seeing what are, all the crazy stuff people come up with. And when, um, when we get all the videos and announce them, we haven't actually said the date we're going to pick the winners. It'll be shortly after July 10th, but we have a variety of prizes we're going to give here. And three random winners just for entering. It has nothing. It is not based on merit, performance, anything. But three random winners are going to... Uh, <laughs> oh, okay. Here. Uh, I'm Dad, back. <laughs> <laughs> Did I actually mute you or what happened? No, I muted it and I didn't realize that I can't... Oh. Like, then since you know the way you have have to have the permission set up uh mm-hmm. i could it wouldn't allow me to uh <laughs> see i was thinking maybe you bumped your board and hit the mute button on your board no i muted that's... it on purpose i had a uh, special okay. help, special helper yeah. here for a minute see, and, and i knew uh, you muted it because i couldn't hear you anymore and i saw you talking but i thought for sure you hit the red button on your board and that's why i couldn't <laughs> yeah okay so i was just going well, on you're and doing on. a great job explaining anyway yeah so we'll try not to like needs me for while well, trying to technical troubleshoot will also explain this at the same time but i was just saying okay we're going to have some prizes going to everyone the first set of prizes is going to be three random winners so this is not based on merit skill achievement anything just you just have to you just have to get in on it and getting in on it gets your best chance of winning here like your best chance of winning something is just getting in on the competition right yes exactly and so three people three very lucky winners are going to each get forty dollars in two dollar bills mailed directly to their house, and they're also going to receive a $60 gift card from Massonomics to use on whatever their heart desires. So it's a $100 prize value for mm-hmm. those three each on uh, $40 of that in $2 bills, which you almost can't. Can you even really put a value on $40 no, in you $2 can't. bills? Uh, you go out to dinner with that, and they'll for sure think you're paying them in fake money. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, 
So, but the, there again, we kind of stole like the, the part that part of the competition. We almost that's a la garage gym competition where you just need to do it. You just need to participate, and you could have a good chance of being a winner. Everyone has an equal chance that participates. And did you say what they actually have to do in order to participate? Uh, that it's did you tell them the the hashtag? That they oh no, no, we haven't got to that. That's the okay, details. Okay. We'll get to that part okay. in a minute here, okay. but. Um, so that was the first set of that was the first set of winners. Um, winners yeah. th- the next one is going to be just Massonomics favorite. So that's just me and Tanner deciding what our favorite one is. Yep. That could be based on a lot of criteria, and it's more than likely going to be how we're feeling that day is how we're going to determine that one. So yeah, uh, that usually does come with a lot of debate, though. There's usually like four or five front runners that are really right. really hard to decide on. So our favorite is going to get a hundred dollars. In two dollar bills, yeah, that'd be fifty. We're doing the math, for people. There, that's fifty two dollar bills directly to you, and you'll probably get some Massonomics goodies mixed in with that too. And then the final biggest prize of them all is going to be awarded <laughs> the granddaddy to, of the the granddaddy of the whole thing is going to be awarded to the heaviest deadlift and Jefferson deadlift. Yes, uh, sorry, yes, yeah. naturally, yes, heaviest Jefferson deadlift. That gets recorded during the contest here, and they're going to get two hundred and twenty-two dollars in two-dollar bills. Yes, you heard that correctly. Do not adjust your podcast. Yeah, sets. there was there was no stuttering, there was no glitching. The two-two-two was what we said there, and I'm really curious. I I have no idea what that number is going to or what that number is going to be. Like we were saying, there's a lot of really strong guys that if they decided to do this, could probably just pull eight hundred Jefferson any day of the week. But yep. a lot of them probably aren't going to do this. So I don't know. I think we're going to have a fair number in the 600s. Will someone hit 700? Maybe, probably. Will someone hit yep. eight? I don't know. That's a big deadlift. So and there's, we know people out there that can do nine. You mm-hmm. know, it's happened. It's on the record board. So maybe some of those guys will come out of the woodwork. We could see anything. But you're not out. Even if someone outdoes you, you still are then in the running for one of those three. Uh, yeah, you're. you're oh, it, well, you're in the running for random, and you could also chance. have one of right. our favorite deadlifts, too. Who knows? Right, right. Maybe you're decked out in Massonomics gear, and you pulled 800 pounds, and that wasn't heavy enough, but like, you know what? That's still our favorite. It's just too good. Yes, yes. Uh, yeah, Massonomics gear being on isn't required to enter, but it's encouraged. It's always a great and, tiebreaker, too. Yeah, and we're probably, obviously, you know, if you know how competitions go, we're going to share a whole bunch of these videos, and if you're wearing massonomic stuff, they're going to be that much more likely to share it. If, if you care about that, you know, I mean, that's, that's just the truth about that. Um, we did talk about, uh, like these videos. We're looking for Jefferson deadlifts, Mm -hmm. you know, like that's, that is a requirement. It needs to be a Jefferson deadlift in the video. And also like, that's what we're looking for in the video, right? Like, there's not a secret, uh, yeah, we don't don't know how, yeah, we don't need like a big scripted movie thing. Like we just want to see, Good, cool Jefferson deadlifts. And, right. Um, yeah, I mean that's that. I mean that really is it. Like you, you're probably probably have more points coming your way if you can keep your video to less than ten seconds. <laughs> right. Right. Like we want stuff we can we can share and and spread the good word of Jefferson deadlift. You know, like uh, we anticipate we get a whole bunch of videos out of this that we can share, and that uh, a lot of the community, even outside of Massonomics, start to starts to take note of why is there so many damn jefferson deadlifts going on right now and you know we can play into the one true deadlift and i really i really like the thought of just being able to tell people you know uh hopefully this draws in new some new people that aren't as familiar with jefferson deadlifting and we get to tell them you know we got sick of the sumo conventional deadlift debate we think they're both cheating and this is the one true deadlift Mm -hmm. and it gives us that chance to get that message out to some new folks i think here exactly that's what we're all about, getting the message out. <laughs> so <laughs> when people want to enter the contest, of course, they have to tag us so we can see it. Yeah, it needs to be a post um, on your main page. It needs to be a post, not yeah, just can't a story, be story that disappears. So you yeah. got to uh, uh, tag us at Massonomics in your post. And then also use hashtag Jefferson DL. And that means Jefferson deadlift in case uh, you couldn't connect the dots there that so part out. We, yeah. we, we shortened it for you so hashtag jefferson dl uh, yeah. along with tagging us we'll we'll get you we'll make you pop up on our radar yeah and so if you can't jefferson deadlift uh five six seven hundred pounds it doesn't matter 
you just do what you can and that's going to get you entered and get you a good chance at one of those three random winnings. Um, so don't worry about it. We're not, you know, the heaviest certainly has something to be won there, but everyone could be winning something here as well. What else about the competition? Is that kind of the nuts and bolts of this thing? Uh, you yeah, say just, the just be on the lookout. Too? Yeah, just be on the lookout for the official post on Instagram. That's where all the details will be. But one more time really quick. June 29th through July 10th, three random winners, heaviest winner, Massonomics favorite, tag us, hashtag Jefferson Deadlift. Boom, you're in. Make it a Jefferson just deadlift. Just that simple. Yeah, make it a Jefferson deadlift. <laughs> make yeah, the so video. Do, please do a Jefferson deadlift <laughs> yeah, in the video yeah. somewhere. You know, like the focal point of the video, a Jefferson deadlift. <laughs> we don't want 50 seconds of something else and a one second Jefferson deadlift. We're telling you right now that that video will almost certainly not ever get reposted or anything because that's not how Instagram works. Like, you know, yeah, no one yeah, will yeah. watch that. It's worthless. <laughs> just do a damn Jefferson deadlift. <laughs> Can be creative with the lift. But do a Jefferson deadlift. Now, are you being coy about that? No, I'm not. Here? I assure you, I can't be any more straightforward <laughs> than what I'm doing being right now. As much as I am laughing, just do the damn thing. <laughs> I think I'm going to read between the lines on that one and <laughs> interpret what you really want to see there. <laughs> Again, I'm not sure if we're on the same page here or not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm excited for it, though, and obviously this runs over the 4th of, Jul- of July, which is fun timing for this, and... Uh, Maybe soon, maybe real soon, we'll have some uh, Jefferson deadlift uh, uh, merchandise that exists that you could uh, you could utilize along with this competition. Maybe even mm, that sounds nice. Just a little hint there, a little foreshadowing of things to come. I'm uh, I'm getting really thirsty, Tanner. Oh yeah, I thought you'd never mention being thirsty. Hmm. Here we go. Just pull this magnetic drink spotter light off of my corner post here. What do you got over there? I had the last strawberry watermelon that was left. It was like week three or four drinking this thing. Pretty damn hot, yeah. (laughs) I've got a uh, LaCroix tangerine. Tangerine. Not one of my favorites, but it's not limoncello either, so it's got that going for it. it. Yeah, it's not bad. This is a three and a half to me. You know, it's it doesn't wow me. But yeah, I, I think it does, it's not bad. It's no, nothing about it is mm-hmm. really just I don't dislike it. Yeah. I'm pretty sure I've said this like five weeks in a row, but I think strawberry watermelon. I think I've always given this a four because it is good. Okay. A solid four over there on the stra- strawberry watermelon polar. Mm. Is that a polar? Yes. Yes. Polar, yes. hardly newer. All right, Tanner. We got lots of stuff to talk about here. Yeah, what do we go to next? I don't know. We were both on vacation. I feel like we probably need to talk about our vacations a little bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you went to fl- uh, Florida, right? I did go to Florida, my... Ohio of the South. <laughs> Is that what they call it now? <laughs> that's like, that's what the kids are saying. Uh, my wife had a work trip, which means that I get to tag along and have some fun, and it did work out good. That also one of her good friends was also going on this work trip. And her husband also tagged along, so we got to do fun guy stuff while they did uh, work stuff. Yeah, work stuff, conference stuff, uh, and then met up with us later in the day. So that part of it was really fun. But, man, I this time we went to Destin, Florida, more up in the panhandle, or in the panhandle, damn near Alabama. And oh, okay. That, that so is was, a, it on the, was it on the Gulf? Oh, yeah, it's still? on the Gulf. Yeah. That is a different vibe. The last time I went to Florida was like a year ago. I went to Miami. Man, oh, yeah. it, it, you might as well be in two, other than the beach, you might as well be in two different places, like uh, two different countries. It was such Did a. Did it feel more like you, what you'd call the South? Oh my God. Like, everywhere uh, you went, everyone has an Alabama accent. I'm like, where the hell yeah, am I? Okay. I, yeah. I didn't pick up on this anywhere when I was in Miami. Like, you know, Miami, everyone's speaking Spanish, but in here, it just, it's the, it's like, oh, I'm surrounded by Jonathan's just. Yeah. The the y'alls and the drawls on everything. It was, (laughs) it's like a whole nother world. And yeah, still. It just a uh, southern accent just catches me off guard every time because I'm just, <laughs> I was thinking, like, where the hell am I right now that I'm hearing this? Yeah, but uh, yeah, Alabama is very close to there, so I it, guess it does make sense. But uh, did you dip your toes in the water? I and did, your ass yes. In the sand? Well, I did some of that. Life is good today. The problem with that though was that. Like every day we were there was just the most insane weather. Everyone's like, "Oh, it hasn't rained this much in forever!" Like it was just oh. crazy. Like there was one day, 
it felt like the, the one guy, the, the our Lyft driver picked us up and he goes, geez, this is almost feels like it's when a hurricane's come, uh, when a hurricane's coming. I mean, like there's parking cones blowing everywhere, like the traffic lights, mm. like the power was cut on everything. Like right, police right. had to come and manually like flag people through intersections. It was, it was insane. Like the, the rain was coming down so hard. Uh, Did you do just like inside stuff more than well, or? so that was more in the morning the one day and then it got nicer. But the I guess the only bad thing about the weather, there was like one full day when it was kind of shitty. But the main thing was trying to go to the beach. Then you had like all these red flag warnings, which I didn't even know how yeah. that worked, where you aren't yeah, supposed yeah. to go in the water. So we go to a beach with lifeguards and like, get out of the water, get out of the, you know, that whole thing. Eventually <laughs> we made it to some other beaches where there wasn't lifeguards where you kind of just, I mean, you were, I was like, didn't need to like push it hard, but I mean, you can at least go in the water right. then, you know? Right. So that made things a little bit of a pain for that. But um, other notes, I'll just give the quick, the quick the down and dirt, the yeah. highlights. Yeah. I did get to experience my first Waffle House. And, oh, yeah. And yeah. That's, I, I forgot say, about that. I'm Yeah. Like you had like people build it up. So you have like these expectations in your head, you know, it's been, it's right. been talked about a ton in our discord, especially. And <laughs> the, okay. The food. The food's about what I expected. Maybe even a touch better. Like I, it's just like it's just solid breakfast food. You know, it, it's it's good. There's it wasn't right. it wasn't bad by any means. I would totally eat it again and again and again. I had no problems with the food. Just good solid food. Yep. Uh, but man, people talk about the atmosphere, and I kind of was ready, but I actually was not ready at all. It blew me away. So you it, that was real. I, I could not believe actually how it is in there and. I don't know if this is how all Waffle Houses are or just some of them, but there isn't a back room. Like, the the kitchen and everything is right there. There's no, okay. like, oh, yeah, I'm going to, oh, yeah, I got to go talk to the cooks. It's like, no, no. So does it feel like a hibachi grill? Oh, it's insane in there. Like, my wife turns to me and she goes, damn, these people are working right now. Like, they're yeah. they're like, the same people are, like, bussing tables and cooking your food and, and <laughs> checking out tickets and it's just like everyone's running everywhere it was absolutely insane and we sat at the 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 bar counter where where the you know the the grill the or the the kitchen is right across from you you know they're they're four feet from you so you get to really take it all in for how crazy it is but i just did not uh i did not i did not expect it to be like that it was it was like very organized chaos is probably the best yeah. way to put it. And, and it was, I even heard someone commenting, like one of the waitresses was like, Oh, I've had like 40 tickets in the last hour. Like even they made it seem like even for them was really busy. And I, right. I think it's because it was a crazy storm going on when we went. So I don't know if everyone was like, Oh yeah, let's just get breakfast now instead. Right. Right. But, uh, yeah, I mean, you had, you had, it felt like all the crazy stereotypes, like you have some person working named Pinky, another person's name is Prime, <laughs> like someone, you have the, like the pregnant waitress, you have like the really old waitress, like it was just like, felt the like pregnant every, waitress that's on a smoke break. <laughs> it just felt like every stereotype you could think of existed there, but man, they were, they, they were, they were working hard and it was good. So I, I was really impressed and I am now even more convinced that we have to go to the one in Columbus the next time we're, we're there for yeah. the Arnold because it is just such an experience. But that we'll, pro- see, like, we'll probably go to that. Or anything? No, no, it was all, everyone was very civil and nice and good. It was at like 10 in the morning. But uh, it, like I'll say, hype this up for how wild it is and we'll probably go to the one in Columbus and it'll be like the most yeah, chill yeah, thing ever. Yeah. <laughs> so that was really cool to do that. Other than that though, it was mostly just beach stuff hanging around. I do got to say though, one day we went, or we had with the, the people we with, we had rented a car so we'd get around a little easier because it is a pain in the ass to get anywhere because everything's so spread out and just lifts just kind of sucked. Ubers, all that just, it was annoying. So the one day we went and I'm even, I mean, you drive up, I think the highway's like 30 a or something like that. And it goes along the coast, which is a lot of really cool sites. And you get to these areas where there's just like way too many rich people live in them because everything is like perfectly manicured and right. done to perfection to the point where it just feels so fake. So we stopped at this one place. I mean, they make it look like a European. T- I'd have to go back on my phone and look. They make it look like this European like town, like like you're in Sweden or something. Like they have like these. Yeah. It just doesn't even. It, it looks so out of place in Florida. It's cool, but it makes no sense. It's so bizarre. And then you go down a little bit more, and I believe it was called Seaside. And we're pulling in and just the, the grass on just the boulevard, the palm trees, it is all done to perfection. And I go, God, this does not even seem real. It, it for real looks like 
we're in the Truman Show right now. And my wife is right, like, no, it right. says right here, the Truman Show was filmed here. And it's like, that was... Like, so like, you had said that? Yeah, and I said it was, that. And yeah. she goes, no, no, yeah. so-and-so said, this is where they actually filmed it at. And I didn't believe her. And we looked it up in a... Oh, yep, what are of the course, odds? That is where the Truman Have Show was filmed. Have you seen that? Oh, yeah. It's a great movie. I've seen it multiple times. And yeah, it's just like, it feels so fake and manufactured that it's... Uh, I mean, that that is where they filmed the Truman Show. So, like, if that yeah. doesn't say, like, that fits that thing. And that was 20 years. I'm sure it's even, it'd be funny well, to watch right. it now because I had to look up some scenes and be like, oh, yeah, I was standing there and there and there. But, uh, yeah, it was cool to go to, but some of the places were maybe a little too... Uh, right, maybe like a little too manufactured. Felt too much like you were on the Truman Show. <laughs> yeah, you know, that's yeah. a good way of describing it, actually. Yeah. Otherwise, though, it was a pretty good vacation. Didn't have any travel issues, which is always huge. Uh, oh, once you have a family nice. and all that, to not have to. I the kids weren't with us. Luckily, my parents watched our kids, which is good to get away, just to have a little time to sleep in and yeah, uh, <laughs> just get caught up on life. But yeah, to not have travel issues either there on the way back was yeah. was really really nice because uh, that yeah, can, that, that helps can a lot. Kill a kill a vacation in a hurry. That's true. Uh, yeah, I'm glad you brought up the Waffle House. I'd forgotten about that already. It'd been so long since uh, we hadn't talked. I know you posted about that, and I was really curious about it. So yeah, yeah, it was good. I'm trying to think. I wore masks and my stuff every day. Of course, no one notices, like always. Yeah. It's really annoying. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, that was mostly my takeaway from Florida, I believe. Oh, of course, like the first Lyft driver we get, he asks where he's from, and we say South Dakota, and his dad was from like not too far from Sioux Falls. <laughs> it's like, okay. It doesn't matter where you go. Like someone has so, yeah, a, somebody always some is, connection yeah, to South Dakota somebody. in some way, yeah. And then like another mm-hmm. guy, like a shuttle driver one night asking where we're from, and oh, my wife's family's from Minneapolis. You guys don't seem to have that northern accent the way they do. And I'm like, that's... It depends on who you ask. Some people think they got it bad, some not so much. Yeah. Yeah. So that was Florida. Yeah. Well, we did go to this bar one night, and we thought it was, like, pretty low-key chill. Uh, and so we were, like, wanting to go to the more exciting place. And, like, oh, no, this is the exciting place. Stay here. And we're like, yeah, whatever. And then all of a sudden you're drinking enough that, you know, two hours have gone by. And then you realize, oh, yeah, this is much like the zoo in Aberdeen. Oh, this has turned Everyone into the Everyone showed up place. at midnight. Yeah. yeah. Right, and right. it was uh, and it was karaoke night, which is also hilarious to be at a bar. And damn, the number of just sad country songs that can be. I didn't know you could <laughs> sing so many sad country songs on a Friday night for karaoke until I went to this to this bar. And I maybe. So did it like, really get you going? Oh, my. It was hilarious. I mean, it's like comical. I'm not, I'm not a country guy. My wife doesn't like country either, but it was hilarious how every song was just this heartbreaking. It just like, <laughs> like the, the song would just be the most whatever cheated on me. I hate you yeah. all that. Like, you know, how all country songs are. Yeah. And then it would be done and everyone would just be back right back to party and woo, woo, screaming and cheering. And the next song <laughs> would come on and be just the saddest, sappiest thing ever. And it, I, I couldn't, I couldn't believe that that was, there was that much of that, but we are basically, and you were basically in the South there, so it makes sense, I suppose. Yeah, a little different than Miami, Florida, for sure, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, very different. <laughs> uh, so that's my trip. Tanner, you were also on a bit of an excursion yourself. Yeah, I didn't go South. I went uh, went East, I guess, pretty much. Uh, I, suppose it, I suppose it's South, oh, though, oh, still. Dude, okay, you know what? One other thing, though, that just made me think of the same directions. Okay, you might not. Western, North, East, South you might have to look at a map to actually see this. I did not realize that this part of Florida is in the Central Time Zone. Still, I didn't think any of Florida mm. was in the Central Time Zone. And if you look, like the way western part of Florida, I mean, straight north of that, it's west of Indianapolis. Like oh, that's yeah. that's damn near in Illinois. That's crazy yeah. how far west that is, isn't it? That is. It is like west of Indianapolis. Yeah, it's it's borderline the Midwest as far as how far that west goes. Yeah, it's actually I don't think of it this way, but f- Florida kind of runs just as far east and west as it does north and south, doesn't it? Yeah, it sort of does. You're right. It is like a big square that's just missing the All right. the bottom left diagonal. All right. Huh, the more you know. <laughs> so what was the town? Uh Like was it by Pensacola? Not quite that far. Like where we stayed, okay. it was, okay. uh, what's it like Miramar beach, but then we went east okay. over to like seaside and great beach and Bayside from saved by the bell. <laughs> Naturally. Of course. Yes. 
<laughs> so yeah, that general region. Yeah. Okay. All right. Tell me about your vacation. Let's hear it. I went to uh, just left Western Northeast South Dakota and just went to straight Northeast South Dakota for a few days just to get away from it all <laughs> and leave boy, all was your it a change worries of pace. behind. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> boy, was it a change of pace. No, we went to Washington, D.C., mm-hmm. which uh, we're looking. I just want to see how far. It's actually like speaking of geography stuff, it's really a long way south of us, actually. I got to see this now, um, too. Let's like see. a lot farther south of Aberdeen oh, than yeah. what it's I would a, picture in just in my head. That's like even with Kansas City almost. Right, right. It is. But I guess Virginia was the south technically, right? <laughs> kind of. I mean, it was borderline. Right, right. Um, so, yeah, we went to Washington, D.C. I've not, have you ever been there before? Or? Yeah, I went. I know, uh, like a lot of people take high senior trips there. I got to yeah. actually, it was... I, I did go when I was going to be a senior in high school, but what happened for me was my homeroom teacher said, hey, there was this contest where people had to write a paper and they were going to pick the best paper and they could go to Washington, D.C. And they go, no one wrote a paper. So if you can write one in the next two hours, you win, you can you win. And I said, I will get this paper written. Yeah. And I mean, it was like it was to say a paper would be general. I mean, it was like a one page yeah, thing. Yeah. And right. uh, so then I got to go on like a week long trip to D.C., which was pretty cool. So you probably got to see a lot of the sites. Uh, then, we, yes, it was it. a very, because you were there with all these other kids from South Dakota. So it was a right. very regimented thing. Like, I, I feel like we probably saw about as many things you could possibly see in one trip. Yeah. Yeah, and that's what, I've never been there before. My wife, my wife had been there before, but we took uh, uh, my 11-year-old, too, and we left the small girls at home because we wanted to have some fun. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, to, well, because we want to en- we wanted to enjoy some of the trip mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> and uh you know taking five and two year olds uh, across the country on planes and stuff oh, especially if there are like parts that. of that that can be uncontro- uh, 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 that can be not so fun mm-hmm. sometimes so it was a lot of fun and but we did man we i, I really like the history part of it oh, yeah. and i knew i knew i was gonna like it before even going i was like researching stuff before getting there even you know it's just because it's it's just fun for me like mm-hmm. I l- really like that stuff and I like going to the east, you know we went to Boston a few years ago I really like that I still want to go to Philadelphia because I haven't been there yet and I just that stuff interests me so I knew I was going to like it and we went to all the I mean we we walked so much <laughs> like I wasn't lifting for a week but my god my step count was like 6x normal every <laughs> yeah. day you know <laughs> Uh, there was a couple days where I'm like, we just have to sit down for a while because my feet hurt. It was so bad right now. It remind you of the Arnold a little bit. Just... Yeah, yeah, it did. It was it was like that feeling sometimes. Um, I was just checking a message there from our guests, but I think we're still good to go. Okay, uh, just changing my th- train of thought. But no, it w- it was really cool. We saw all the all the all the sites. We went to like every Smithsonian museum that was there, basically, and mm-hmm. and you uh, could spend a day my, in each one of those if you wanted to. Oh, that was that's my takeaway from it though. Is just like it becomes an overload of stuff. It's just like everything you is just so end crazy up just, that it just starts right, to feel that, normal. Exactly. So I ended up just just starting even just kind of like the highlights at that point in time where mm-hmm. I'm like there are certain things even. With being like over just an overload, there are certain things though that still stick out above that that I'm like, oh, now that was cool. So the few things that were like that for me was actually seeing um, the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution and the Bill of Rights. Where mm-hmm. I'm like, ah, oh, that's crazy that that is the document yeah. right there. <laughs> yes, I'm like that just fe- that just it does seem kind of crazy that that's like that 200 and you know, whatever yeah, the 50 year old document that, has, the, yeah. has had the impact that it has. Right. Right. So that those were kind of crazy. And then I really liked, uh, I had been looking for, forward to seeing the changing of the guard mm. at Arlington uh, yep. national cemetery. Yep. That was uh, a cool experience and something that stuck out to me that I hadn't expected was the, na- uh, the air and space museum. They had like the plane that the Wright brothers, first did oh, man really? uh uh-huh. they had that plane on display oh i'm like that's pretty wild yeah that but, is i didn't even and know then that they had the anymore. uh yeah they the only thing that was new on it is they had like recovered the fabric in like the 80s but other than that it's like the original um actually the the plane yeah. that they did 
did first. Um, I guess the technical term is heavier than air manned flight. Oh. Because you know there would have been like hot air balloons that preceded that, oh, but that was okay, sure li- yeah. by light means of lighter than air. Yeah, yeah. Um, but then the other thing there was uh the Apollo eleven capsule that they came back to Earth in was there on display too, and that was also cool. Where I'm like, that's pretty crazy too. Mm-hmm. Like some seeing some of that stuff in person, it's just. It just uh, strikes you different than watching like videos and seeing pictures of it and yes. stuff. It's like, oh, that is the thing. That's that thing, huh? Okay, and you said that was the that was the air and space Smithsonian. Yeah, is that, that okay. thing is pretty cool. See, and I'm trying to yeah. remember because when I went, that was that was somewhat a somewhat limited day. I believe I went in. I cannot remember if I did that one or not. Now, I know for sure. Is there like a music and pop culture one or something like that? Do you know? Yes, yes. The and we didn't go there. Um, there. I mean, there's like 15 Smithsonian yeah. museums along the. It's on the mall, you know, in yep. uh, DC, and there's just there's it's just lined with them. Of course, you know we went to the botanical garden one, which that was one of my wife's favorite. And actually, I had thought, oh, I won't care about this. I'm like, that was one of the coolest ones. Actually, oh, seeing really? all the yeah the plant stuff. I mean, it's just just because it was so much different than some of the other stuff, you know, mm-hmm. it just, uh, st- just really stuck out to me compared to some of the other ones. Um, if there, Oh, what was well, something I thought that felt a little overrated to me when I saw it was, uh, they call it like the stones and bones one, which would be, uh, uh, old fossil, you know, it's like the, Oh, for, uh, for fossils the Smithsonian, and, you're saying? And, like, they had, yeah, they had, like, the Hope Diamond there. Would that be, like, the natural history one? or Yeah, the natural okay. history one. And, it, like, the Hope Diamond was something that I, was just a little um, underwhelming to me when I saw, you know, just like, nah, I guess it's just a... <laughs> yeah, it's a shiny you know, rock. <laughs> right, right, we right. We figured out how to make fake ones that look just like this now. Oh, one other cool... And just think of anything that's noteworthy that not everyone does exactly. You know, basically, we did the, we did the stuff that everyone would yeah. do when they make this trip, but... We did do a, we got a tour from, um, to, tour of the Capitol building through one of the South Dakota senator's offices where they gave us a tour and we wa- got to watch the Senate for a while, mm-hmm. like sit in the balcony above the Senate. And, uh, we walked in and I, one of the senators was talking and I could tell who it was just, uh, literally by voice. Like as soon as we walked in, you could tell it was Bernie Sanders yeah, yeah. and he went on like this 30 minute thing where nobody it's like, nobody was even pretending to listen to him. Like, it's just like him just talking nonstop. And we're like looking over his shoulder. I'm like, this guy's barely looking at a note and he's just talking for so long about this material that he just, you know, I'm just like, uh, it was just, it was just it just felt very much like what you would watch on C-SPAN mm-hmm. but it was just fun that it was Bernie Sanders someone that I actually you know because out of yes. out of the the 100 senators maybe yeah. there's 20 that actually Exactly there's so many me. that you're yeah. like I, this name could you could make up the right. name and I went no right. um, do you be like hmm this guy someone should tell this guy podcast exists and <laughs> <laughs> get really full time uh, here. After, uh, and there was nobody else in there. I mean, it was not all the, the, the senators, I don't know what they were doing, but they're just like taking turns coming in and blathering on about stuff. And then after he left, then it was Elizabeth Warren that came in after him. And I'm like, ah, it's one of the other ones that I actually know who it is. So, Mm -hmm. um, that was kind of interesting in, in, uh, the Capitol building. But one thing I would say about all this stuff, I'm like, there's a lot of like, it's weird. Museums and stuff are weird in that I, I get it when it's, uh, you know, the Declaration of Independence and stuff. That's got to be somewhere. And, you know, we should keep that. And, yeah. like, that should be on display at a museum. But some of the stuff I'm like, does this, be- where does the where does this belong? Like, is this, does this belong in a museum? Like, who, who is it that, own- like, it's just a weird thought. I'm like, where did you get this from? And like, should oh, you be the one that okay, has yeah, this? Yeah, like yeah, right. when I'm looking at this, <laughs> like, like no, uh, no, well, we claimed it. 2000 so it's ours now. <laughs> year old Mongolian suit of armor or something right. like that. I'm like, I'm just not sure who yeah, does this belong in Mongolia or who? Yeah. <laughs> I get what you're saying. <laughs> right. Right. There's some of that that I thought. And then like, just like the overdoneness of some of it, I'm like, I think it's really cool and I like it, but I could also see the side where I'm like, should 
does all this need to exist? Like, I'm just like, I'm a little conflicted in a way almost where it's like, there's so many like memorials and monuments and like, like really cool, really expensive stuff Mm -hmm. that I'm just like, I'm not sure, but I, I like it. I, and I appreciate it, but I could also like, uh, just to play devil's advocate. I'm like, it seems like there's a lot of money tied up in like, just like, pumping ourselves up uh, yeah i mean i, I like do that, see you know? that at the same time it is your national capital so it's like ah, if you can't do right it there, it's the place it? for and, it i mean of course it's been paid for over like 30 times right now, or three thousand yeah. times with you know the the tourism and all that but yeah and right. some of it does like to just maybe feel like a little too self-congratulatory at times you know <laughs> right that's also the kind of the interesting part about the you know united states history where it's just like Oh, even this stuff, it's not that old. Mm-hmm. You know, like, oh, yeah. so it's, like, it's yeah, just well, not that like, old. It's like just the you, old you stuff is a like, couple hundred years old. Like. Right, <laughs> right, right. But it was really cool. I liked it, and I like going to, like, the, of course, the Jefferson uh, mm-hmm. Memorial. Okay, yeah, so I was going to ask you that stuff, like, uh, between. I like, wore Jefferson Link- deadlift shirts around everywhere, so. Did, did yeah, we went to them? all the, we went to the, walked up to the uh, Lincoln Memorial and the, uh. So, Washington Monument. Yeah, and, of those, uh, Washington so. Monument, Lincoln Memorial, the Jefferson one, the mm-hmm. White House, like what was of those locations are, I guess even in there too, isn't, yeah. is there like the, is the Vietnam and the World War II one and all yeah, that right those, in there too? Yeah, they're, they're uh, and, and the Marine, the Iwo Jima raising oh, the flag one is yes. big one too. Yeah, and, so of those, uh, like what one stood out to you the most? I really liked the Lincoln uh, yeah. Memorial, but I've always liked Lincoln history and stuff too, so that I knew that, but that one was, um, just like that structure and stuff is like a little bit awe mm-hmm. inspiring almost, but it's also weird. It goes into like the Illuminati stuff of like the, the architecture that's chosen to be used for all of this stuff. Like why is the Lincoln Memorial? Uh, it looks like, you know, a Greek Parthenon or what, you know, I'm not even using the right comparisons probably, but um, it's just funny. The different architect architecture that's chosen to be used and then like all the different symbolism and it's like, ah, it has 36 pillars for these reasons. Yes. And, and I'm like, do people make this up after it's I done know, or I like, know. I'm, you know, like, they're like, like, okay, we just got to find as many things that we can assign symbolism to as possible right, or reason right. to, um, did you, okay. Like this for me, one of the things that stood out the most to me and I, I mean, I'm probably building up more in my head now than what it was, but when you, when you were at the the Iwo Jima, I don't even know what they call that monument memorial. That th- I think um, that's the Marine Memorial. Okay, actually, that was the United States. Did they Marine, have the, you know. the the full like band and everything there? Did you see that happen? No, no, because we did a night tour of some uh, of that stuff. So it was like, which was kind of cool too, because everything was all lit up uh, at night. So we were actually at a night tour when we did when we were at that one. Okay, that to me is I would actually love to see it again to see like if it holds up in my brain, but. They had the guys doing the whole drum line and everything. And oh, I thought at the cool. time that that was like the craziest thing I'd ever seen because they yeah, don't like, cool. you know, it's like Marines. They don't like their body does not move besides the the drumming happening. Other than that, they might right. as well be a statue. And just right. the I can't even remember it now. Like it just seems so insane to me at the time. And it went on and on. And I thought that that was so awesome when when I saw that one. Yeah, probably the coolest part, though, I did get to see uh, Mass Nomics crew member. Uh, we went to a Nationals baseball yes. game, too. Well, you're a big baseball guy, so it makes sense. Yeah, crossover into sports <laughs> and books. Uh, actually, baseball being my technically my least favorite of the major sports, definitely the thing that I've been to most in person just because – I like I do like going to baseball games in, in person because I like the stadiums and oh, I like and it's just the, easy to do the like, vibe yeah, t- yeah a ticket isn't cheaper a big than deal. the other things like, yeah, yeah right but yeah so you did see uh, well yeah maybe we should just uh, segue this into supporting our supporting members yes actually this would be a perfect uh, segue opportunity this is a rel- relatively new segment of the podcast but every week we like to give back to our supporting members and. We've got a whole bunch of new supporting members over the last month, so it's good to give back to as many of them as possible here. And the first one I would mention is Big Murph, uh, supporting her because you know I got to meet her in person at the Washington Nationals uh, baseball game, which that was really cool. Okay, did you guys know that at all ahead of time, or how did that play out? Yeah, because I had asked her about you know ahead of time, like if she goes to the games, because I kind of thought I remember her talking about it, and she has been season ticket holder in the past, so. Mm was just asking her about like best way to get there and best way to get tickets. Cause I didn't buy tickets until like the, 
within 24 hours of the game, you know, because I didn't know exactly what our plan was going to be. And um, so I was getting inside info from her, her, and she said she was probably going to be there too. So I said we'll have to, uh, you know, <laughs> find each other at the game. And she came and sat sat uh, sat by us for like half the game because the Nationals aren't very good, I guess. So, oh, so there's a lot the of stadium open. was like half empty. Yep. Yeah. Or half full, depending on your, if you're an optimist. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> yeah, I saw that uh, the the post you guys had, and at first I'm thinking, is this totally random? Were they here just totally <laughs> on accident? That'd be cooler if it was just completely random yeah, like and then that. You had the picture, nah, I knew. Yeah, you guys had the picture together. I'm like, oh, that's so cool. <laughs> yeah, it, so that was really cool, and she's uh, competing in the Lift Hard, Live Easy Classic, so we'll see her in a uh, month again anyways, too. Mm-hmm. So that was cool, Big Murph. Uh, other things... Uh, big Gluck drop tested the drink spot of light <laughs> with like 800 pounds. Yep. So that was good to see. Uh, big Jess competed at IPF worlds. Those, uh, just kind of are wrapping up and how'd she do? Did she get third in her I believe class? She got, I think. Third, she got yes. the bronze. So congrats. Third best in the world is not anything to shake a <laughs> stick at. Yeah. Um, so pretty good. Pretty, pretty good. Big Chris Mark, the man with two first names. He did his first powerlifting mock meet. He got a, 405 squat, 275 bench, a 440 deadlift for an 1120 total. Excellent numbers there. Let's see. Then we've got uh, Big A. Aaron. Big Aaron was the guest this week on Unpaid and Underrated. So make sure to check out the Unpaid and Underrated podcast. That was a fun one. I didn't know that much about him, and I got to learn a lot more. And I'm, it was just another case where I'm like, Oh, this is really cool. Getting to know more about some of the people that have supported us for a long time and over, you know, he supported us and listened to us for a long time. And I, I mean, I see him in the discord, but I just didn't really know about him. And now I, uh, not like I put a face to the name cause I don't see his face, but I put like a, it's more than a fate putting a face to name. Actually, it's like putting like a, <laughs> just really, really like know him deeply. Right, personally. right, right. So yeah. that's cool. I have to, I'm very behind on the podcast. I have to get caught up. So that's on my to-do list. Is uh, I listened to one of those on the, pl- I listened to that on the plane on one of my plane rides actually. And then last couple is uh, Big Luke. He got hitched. So mm. congrats on the funeral. <laughs> <laughs> the old ball and chain. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Big Luke got married. And then Big Keegan went to prom. So congrats on Damn. Big Keegan, Keegan going to prom. And that's that covering the full supporting. spectrum. That's covering the yeah. full spectrum of relationships there. <laughs> that is a lot of life marriage. cycle stuff. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Can I, should I tell you about who this episode is uh, brought to you by? Yeah. I don't see our guest yet. So we got okay. time. She, yeah. She had mentioned that she'd be running a couple minutes that late. She felt like not showing up. So just go on. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I will, uh, I got a, I'll tell you about an ad here, but then, uh, you know, if we need to do some more stuff, we got plenty of topics to talk about here, I think. So we'll talk about more if need be. But what I wanted to tell you all about is Juggernaut AI. Juggernaut AI is the uh, training app that we use. Tommy and I use it. A majority of Mastonomics gym uses it. We've been using it for many months. We've got a whole bunch of people competing in the Lift Hard, Live Easy Classic that are using it right now to peak for this meet that we're exactly one month out from today. It's uh, We're recording this on June 22nd. That meet's coming up on July 22nd. Got a whole bunch of people that are using this app, Juggernaut AI app, right now, peaking it and seeing uh, starting to see some big numbers get moved around the gym and some big numbers get moved from people... Um, sharing their training videos online. And I think, I don't want to put words in their mouth, but I think a lot of them like it for the same reasons that a lot of us us like it. It's principle-based training, and it is catered specifically to you. So it, it takes into account your strengths and weaknesses and helps program around that, use that to your advantage, and also uh, find those weaknesses and help to bring those up. And with the idea of bringing your strength numbers up along the process. And I've seen it work in a whole bunch of cases. If you want to get signed up, head over to their uh, website. Go use your web browser. Don't sign up through the app store. Use the web browser. It's uh, juggernautai.app. Use discount code Massonomics, and it'll save you 10% for the lifetime of that membership. 
And this episode is also brought to you by Swisslink. In 1995, Maurice Bigmo Huffman founded Swisslink with the mission to bring authentic Swiss Army goods to the United States and into the hands of those yearning for quality gear at uncompromised prices. Over the years, that mission expanded to nations across Europe and beyond. Now for nearly three decades, Big Mo has been traveling far and wide in search of the best items for military forces around the world. Big Mo doesn't only find authentic military clothing for Swisslink, he brings in everything you can imagine from Swiss military rangefinders to Italian police tracksuits. Swisslink.com is also home to the Swisslink Classic Wool Blankets. They're an ideal mix of 80% wool and 20% recycled fibers, and it's that special blend that provides a soft, luxurious feel while maintaining all the benefits of wool. The designs are reminiscent of brands that rhyme with Schwendelton and Schwudson Bay, but are available at only a fraction of the cost. Swisslink's exceptional collection and dedication to quality customer service distinguishes them from the competition. Enjoy a 15% discount on your next purchase at Swisslink.com by entering code MASS at checkout. That's M-A-S-S to save 15% at Swisslink.com. Thank you, Swisslink. Thanks, Swisslink. Tanner, I was trying to look here. Um, I can't confirm it yet, but did you know there is a memorial out in D.C. that has granite from Northeast South Dakota? Oh. I believe it is the Franklin Delano Roosevelt Memorial. And the granite. Okay. The granite is from good old Northeast South Dakota. Wow. Okay. That's uh, that's cool. Yeah. It's the, the iconic... Uh, Dakota mahogany would be the blend. Ah, uh, rich mahogany. It's a very uh, kind of a purpley stone. Oh. So, a little fun fact for for everyone. That is. There. <laughs> Do we? Is our guest actually waiting? She to is. Get she in is or? now here. Yes, she is now. Okay. Oh, okay. So yeah, I should. Uh, I should kick everyone else out here. So we're gonna yeah. start booting. Give them the boot scooting boogie. While I'm doing that, quick. Did you guys have any crazy food at all or anything while you were there? Oh, what did we have? Uh, there, there was a couple things I wanted to bring up on food related. Oh, the one thing I was going to bring up is the lime scooters there. Oh yeah, they're yeah, freaking everywhere, all the and we took them a few times. They're almost a little bit of a nuisance though, because they're because they're everywhere. Because they're everywhere, the bike share and the lime scooters, and then they're like, "Don't want you ride on the sidewalk," but yeah. I would never ride one of those on the street. So I'm like, "Where are you <laughs> supposed to ride this?" Yeah, and then the part like when I every time I used them. Ended up not being convenient. I mean, it's kind of just fun for me and Jack to scoot around on. Mm-hmm. But, like, it's not practical because, like, the places you could leave them. Oh, are you, it's like you drive from one place to the other, and when you get to the place you want to go, you're like, oh, wait a second, where can I actually park this? Oh, and then you have they to, are like, somewhat strict drive, about that. Like, okay. Yeah, yeah. And I don't know, maybe you can go around it, but they threaten to fine you. And I don't, See, like, the last time. With me not knowing what to do. I, well, and it, it probably is different there because there are so many people. The last time I used those was in, like, Phoenix. And it actually was right, like right by ASU. And there, it just seemed like it was a free for all. It was just like, literally get on it wherever you want, leave it wherever you want. It does not matter. And like, then it was perfect. It's like, yeah, this is just so convenient. You can just ditch it when you're done, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That would be better. Uh, Should I let her guest in? Let's do it. Okay. Here we go. Hi, Brittany. How's it going? Good. How are you guys? Good. We're good. Uh, if you if you don't know, I'm, I'm Tanner, and I'm Tommy. Nice. I met you. I met you, Tanner. Oh, that's the... that's right. We, yep, yep, yeah. You stopped yeah. by the booth at the Arnold. Yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> All right, cool. Well, we're, we're gonna if you're ready, we're gonna just jump right into it. We don't want to. We don't want to. Uh, say a bunch of good stuff and not have it be recorded. Yeah, as long so. as you, can you guys see me okay? I'm sitting, not standing, so my computer desktop's a little weird, but if it works, because you guys are in a good studio, so. <laughs> yep, no, this it's works totally fine, yep. Yeah, it's perfect. Um, no, that's cool. Then we, we want to talk about that, too. We'll get to talking about studios. You know, you've got your new podcast going, and that's something I definitely want to talk to you. I'm excited to talk to you about that and find out how that's going to uh, see how you're liking it so far and what what you're how you're feeling about the starts of it. But for anyone that's not listening or for anyone that, that, that doesn't know that hasn't been familiar with you in the past, could you give a little bit of your rundown, you know, the, the typical stuff you talk about on your podcast uh, on a podcast when you're on for the first time where, you know, your, your strong man history, your physique 
competition accomplishments, you know, some of your accomplishments that uh, you've had over the years? Yes. So athletically, I started as a track athlete. That was my first love, favorite sport. I did long jump and 400, 600, pretty much. I was very versatile, so whatever my coach needed me to. So I was an All-American for that. Planned to get a scholarship so I could go to college on that. Ended up tearing my hamstring. So had to kind of come up with a different plan because I didn't sign anywhere yet. Ended up rowing Division One at University of Rhode Island. I was a walk-on. It's the only Division One sport that you can actually earn a scholarship for. So that was cool. Did not like rowing, but I fell in love with lifting there. They made us lift three times a week, the main compound movements. And yeah, I just fell in love with strength. My junior year of college in the summer, I was working at a gym and I stumbled upon a strongman contest called Boston Strongest. Didn't really know what it was, but I thought it looked fun and thought I would be good at it. So I did that and the rest was pretty much history. Um, won my novice show. And then when, after I graduated college in 2014, I actually moved to the area where the strongman gym that I liked in Boston was and ended up just sticking with that for years, became pro in 2017, did strongest swimmer in the world three times, kept getting third. And after a pretty bad injury, I had some wrist reconstruction. I was like, mm, I don't know if I should go back to strongman yet. So I dabbled with women's physique for MPC and that was fun. And then I did something called Super League, which I won and did some tactical training. And now, I, now I'm just kind of washed up. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so you've done a lot. Like the short yeah. version of that is you've done a lot over your period of time in the strength sports and stuff. Like, I mean, you, um, there's been a lot. Did you say you ran the 600? For indoor, yes. Oh, okay, okay. yeah, that's I heard a, that I was too. Like, what's right, the, yeah. Okay, so, so 600 is a, a common indoor event then? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So did, did you out? Did you run like the 800 then too, or would be the six-year longest usually? I did the 800 sometimes. So I would do the decathlon and like the Pence, I forget what it's called, but we have five events. My coach just like, okay, Brittany, let's do this. Let's go to Boston this weekend and do that. So I was just thrown into random things. I also did cross country in the fall. And I've actually done a couple half marathons, so I was kind of, yeah, versatile, I guess you would say. <laughs> yeah. Uh, a lot of people say isn't like, uh, I mean, it depends on what you're good at and everything, but won't, isn't like the 600 or 800, I'd throw in that, that area, isn't it kind of like the hardest event sort of because it's almost a sprint still, but it's the longest uh, sprint event in That's that what range? people say, yes. I would say because it, it's not necessarily a sprint because it's so long, so you just have to be very good with that lactic acid threshold. <laughs> okay. Right. Yeah. Um, so strongest woman in the world, you got, did you say you got third three times? Yeah, I know. I was, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, uh, that's, I mean, that's, that's a crazy. So who is, who is finishing ahead of you in those years? Usually it was Leifa. We went head to head okay. for years. Yeah. She's awesome. Okay. So then you talk about, you know, you made the joke of being washed up. Like, that's not accurate, of course. But, like, there is this uh, thing, and I've seen some of your posts of you talking about it, where you coach people and you do, you know, you're still very active in the sports, especially through coaching. But uh, do you struggle sometimes with the the identity thing? Like, like you, ha you have to tell yourself that you don't have to be actively, you know, you don't have to be getting third every year at, world's strongest woman in order to be able to still feel like you're a valuable coach and like that you, you know, that you can do that stuff and you don't have to be actively doing that all the time to still have value there. Yeah. Great question. So just recently I felt okay with my decision to not feel the need to be in prep for something. And it bothered me for a long time, but it's been very difficult the past year. It'll be a year since I've moved cross country July 1st and you know, especially being somewhere new, I always felt like I always had that community when I was competing and, you know, it gives you like utmost drive and it makes the routine in the day. So it's been, I did feel like I had an identity issue. I actually have been writing about it a lot. I wrote an article called death of an athlete because I pretty much did treat it competing like it was a death because it was all I've known since 
I was the girl in middle school. Like I was going to the high school to practice with the older girls. So like having a competition, always wanting to be better is kind of all I've known. So when I decided to put it on the back burner for a little bit, yeah, it just felt like very traumatic. And I, I would, just, I was starting to get this, this terrible anxiety, which was a compound of, you know, being on my own, being away from family, having my own business that essentially I made and built because of competing and having those connections and my knowledge in the sport. So I struggled, you know, with, will I end up on the streets and be poor if I don't compete? Like it, it came down to that, but now I feel I'm at a very good place with it. You know, I feel confident. I feel that I can still walk the walk and Honestly, until I'm, I one day maybe have kids or something, I always want to be like 12 weeks out from something. Like I could just jump in if I wanted to. Yeah. So what, what is your, your own training like now then? I mean, are you, um, you know, are you benching and deadlifting, squatting, uh, maybe not benching, but deadlifting, squatting, you know, are you doing the big barbell compound movements regularly? And if you are, are you training them what you would consider for strength uh I mean how, how do you go about it then obviously yeah, you're still am, lifting all you know you're not you're not not going to the gym but maybe you're just training differently than how you would if you're actively competing for a, a strongman show yes yeah, so I still power build essentially where I do the main compound movements sometimes instead of benching I might do like a viper press or there's not a lot of strongman out here so I've been doing like more odd lifts outside which I really like because it is like strongman but yeah no I train four to five times a week I do I don't do cardio like I'm like I'm in prep but I do walk or rock every morning and then do some hit a couple times a week post training and I make myself you know it's hard when you coach yourself but I make myself like a template and some weeks might be a little bit different or I don't like beat myself up if I don't like, if I don't have time to finish a workout because I have like a business thing going on. Um, this week's actually been kind of all over the place because I had a photo shoot for American Barbell on Tuesday and they told me it was just going to be fun. Then I got there, they're like, okay, these are the 15 movements you're doing and we want you to try to go heavy. So, we're gonna <laughs> some of it. so I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then yesterday I joined my friend, um, actually Nick Best's wife, who's up here, Callie Best. She convinced me, and I wouldn't consider this competing because it's just fun, but I'm doing a CrossFit, local CrossFit competition July 8th. So will this be your first CrossFit competition ever? Or have yes. you done? Oh, it is. Okay. My first, probably my last. <laughs> <laughs> I would think, uh, I mean, a lot of the events you'll probably be really, really good at though. I mean, like it's, do you yeah, know the events be that much ahead of, of time? Stretch, yeah. Right, right. Yeah. So we've been practicing them and yeah, I actually, some of them are like rowing and then- right. you know, Run squat. So I'm good at those. I'm really, really like, I can't do like hipping pull ups and stuff. And I don't right. want to because I don't want to, you know, I already have enough injuries that I deal with on a daily basis. I don't, I really don't want to be having like any kind of surgery. So I do hold myself back a little bit on purpose. Like if I wanted to be really competitive with it, I would hire someone to help me. Yeah. You know, my technique for Olympic lifting and hone in on my double unders and hone in on kipping pull-ups but right i just don't want to do that so <laughs> yeah that seems fair uh you talked about rucking then so you, is that something you do quite a bit and like because i i say that because like in our, our discord channel there's been quite a few people lately talking about rucking and we've had uh josh bryant on the podcast in the past he's written a book i think on rucking and yeah. like uh what is, I mean, is rucking throwing on a, a weighted backpack and going for a hike? I mean, is it that mm -hmm. simple or like what, what is in, what is, what do you consider rucking? Yes. So I started rucking. Well, so Josh Bryant was my mentor and he coached me for uh, a couple of years. So okay. I'm really close with him. We've actually written some books together. So I okay. did adopt the ruck from him. And the reason I started it is because when I was reading about it, it's three times easier on the joints than running. And again, where I was a former runner, obviously I'm much heavier now than my running days. I still love, I love being outside and getting cardio. I do not like machines. So I just tried rucking. I had like a vest at first. Now I just use a backpack and I just, I usually just do 40 pounds and anything more than that seems to irritate my traps. But yeah, I love doing it. I can do it year round here. And I actually started a rucking group and we've done some like mountain ones. I try to meet with them every few weeks. So it's been fun and it's 
it's nice because you know you're getting more of a a workout like I get my heart rate up to like 140 ish so I'm in that like zone two almost zone three and it doesn't it does it goes by fast like I could do it for two hours <laughs> so with like rucking I mean is that something that you're kind of programming in or is it just like nah I'm just gonna kind of go and just see see where it takes me see how this feels today no I don't I don't do it as methodically as I would do it for like a client. I try not to do it. Like if I know I have a heavy squat day the following day, Mm -hmm. I'll try not to do it the day before. It doesn't really, it doesn't seem to fatigue me too much because I'm used to it. Like I walk, I've always walked so much. Like when I was young, my mom made me walk because I was hyper. (laughs) So she'd be like, go outside. So I'm pretty, pretty accustomed to it. Like it makes me laugh and sorry if this is going in a different direction, but everyone talks about steps these days and I'm just like, yeah. oh my gosh, we're humans. Like <laughs> why are you paying someone to tell you to, to get steps? Like, you should do that anyway. <laughs> yeah. Like yeah. you should be moving a little bit, like for sure. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, something that uh, I always, I'm sure we've talked about this on the podcast at points in time over the year, but whenever we uh, have a woman on that does strongman, I always think it's weird. Like the sport is strongman. So you say like, what is right? Do you say you do strongman or you do strong woman? Because both sound kind of weird to me when I say it in that (laughs) context. So when I write it out in the proper way is to put like strong and then parentheses W O parentheses, cold parentheses, man. But like, if I'm yeah. just talking about, it, I'm just like, oh yeah, I do strong man or strong woman, like whatever you want to consider it. <laughs> right. So you could use either yourself. I just, it's both, both of them sound funny when I say it out loud. I think, I don't know. Neither of them sounds quite right. I know. I, li- I like the parentheses on the W O. Yeah. It's just yeah. harder to say that out loud. <laughs> exactly. Like, I usually just like air quote it. I'm like, yeah, strong man, strong woman. <laughs> yeah. You talked about uh, American Barbell, which that's, I think that that's kind of cool. You know, we've got uh, one of their power bars. It's, it's a really nice bar. Uh, we've got that a little a little while ago. Like, how did that come up? I mean, you are they out of Las Vegas? Then? Yes. Okay. They have a warehouse here. I met them in December at the Olympia here. They were hosting. So Stan Efforting hosted a rhino cage. Yeah. And my goal was. Um, to squat 315 times 20 reps. I only got it times 18, but that was the bar we were using and they were still like impressed. And I just kind of was talking to them and they asked me to work an event for them. And then they asked me to do photo shoots randomly and they're trying to come up with like an educational program. So I might help them out. It's really important for me to like be active in my community. I'm such an extrovert. And because my business is run remotely, I really try and get out and do other things with brands that I align with and people that I like, just because like, I don't like just sitting at home. (laughs) Yeah. That's cool. That seemed, they seem like a a good company and uh, their bars are nice, obviously. So yeah, yeah, yeah. good stuff there. So three fifteen by 20. Well, by 18. (laughs) Have you, was that the most you've ever done of of three fifteen? Yeah. That's a lot. That is a lot. (laughs) (laughs) It was funny because it, it was kind of when I heard about Stan doing the rhino cage, it was like six weeks away. And so it was kind of random. <laughs> I just kind of went with it. I was like, hmm, that sounds like a cool goal that I would like to hit because I had done like 225 times 40 once. <laughs> so I was like, maybe I'll try 315 times 20. That would be really impressive. And then, of course, during it, I was actually going overseas. And then like on the, I was in Australia, so I had a long flight and my, I changed it from high bar to low bar. And that day, like if you watch it, it's so bad. Like by rep three, I am so slow. I think it took me like three, almost four minutes to do 18 reps. <laughs> it's a that lot of, it's a lot brutal. of squatting. Yeah. <laughs> I was so mad at it because I was like, oh, I really obviously all I had to do is two more, but my, my, the bar was rolling back. It was like about to fall off. So I might try again next year the olympia this year is in orlando florida so i feel like oh. that's what i can still achieve if i actually train for it so that oh, that's that's right the olympia is in orlando florida i thought i heard that and then i'm like that can't be right the olympia is always in vegas so the olympia is not in las vegas this next year no so it's the still it's actually earlier too it's the first week in november i heard and i don't know how true this is but i heard they're gonna swap every year with it being in orlando and vegas 
I, how do you I was think not that, aware of that. Yeah. How do you think it'll be in Orlando then? It was supposed to be there right after COVID or maybe it was, I think it might've been there for a year. I can't recall. I mean, there's a big, you know, strength bodybuilding community out there too. I do think right. it's a little, I'm kind of sad because I'd rather it be here in Vegas. I don't have to travel, but right. You know, I do. How, how do you like living in Vegas then? Because Vegas is like, there is a, you know, this, this huge lifting community there, obviously with the Olympia always being there and like the bodybuilding scene and also just like, I would say even the powerlifting scene now and, uh, you know, the gym scene, you know, there's a lot of, uh, cool gyms there that people just want to go to is that, I mean, is, is that part of the draw to living there or is that more coincidental or. So interesting, interesting about Vegas and everyone says this, you would think it would have the best lifting community. I don't know if it's just cause I'm a, like I'm in my thirties compared to when I moved before and I was in my twenties, but I tried over 15 gyms here and Sin City Iron. I'll drive a half hour to go there on like days I have to squat and deadlift. And I, I like it there and I met some friends, but there is no lifting community. And that's why people like it here though. It's very big in bodybuilding because it's more of like a, you know, headphones on, half, right. don't like eye contact, very like people go to the desert, you know, to get like solitude, they say, but it is like, I've had to really expand. That's why I started my rocking group because I've never had a problem making friends in my life. And I was like, no one at the gym, you know, you know how for most gyms in the world, you, if it's like a lifting gym, you know, you can go there at like Friday at two or whatever the gym's time is. And right. you can spot, you can get it. That does not exist here. So do that's, you think that's like, interesting? Yeah, yeah. Do you think, is that a Las Vegas thing or is that like the times are changing thing? I think it's a Las Vegas thing that because when I go to other gyms still visiting or when I see clients that ha no, I think it's just a Vegas thing. Okay. Yeah. Cause that's and the, he, the, yeah. The community part about it is like kind of what I love. Like that's like our, like mass dynamics gym. That's what, that's what I love about it. Like you show up on a Saturday morning and you know, it's just like, Oh, you're just, you know, up like with the everyone. serious that's lifting, happened. but like the yeah. bullshitting and just like the fun, you know, the yeah. atmosphere, the, the, yeah. And I believe everything happens for a reason. But when I first moved to Vegas, part of the, you know, of the draw and everything was because of my industry. And I, at the time had in my head, my goal was to turn pro for women's physique. Cause I wanted to be one of the first people to have a pro card in both. And then, you know, I'm from the East coast, Boston, where like the bodybuilding crowd, like we're dirty and like we lift hard and we're not pretty. And then I came to Vegas and it's like, because it's the best bodybuilders in the world, it's like, they don't want to risk getting hurt. Like they are very pretty. And I'm, I'm not talking negatively at all. It's just, it's a completely different culture bodybuilding in the Northeast where I'm from versus yeah. Vegas, completely different. So it, it actually was a turnoff to me because I was like, you know, that's not me. Like, I don't want to have to get dressed up to go to the gym here, like, <laughs> right. which is fine. I'm not judging anyone, but it's like social media come to life. And like, you can't get a workout. Some of the bodybuilding gyms or the pros are, you can't get a workout without like a whole film crew being there. And that's just not my scene. Right. I could see that for sure. I could, <laughs> uh, that would be that I will, that would not be preferable for myself. I don't think either the style that I would like enjoy, that wouldn't be up my alley. Uh, that's interesting. That's interesting perspective on that, that I hadn't thought of before. Uh, something else cool that you've, you've done that we wanted to ask you about is announcing events, almost being like, uh, I don't know if announcer is the right word or you're like the reporter basically yeah. announcer, like, commentator. Uh, yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Uh, how, what, how did that come about and what's that like? Like, do you enjoy that? Is that cool? That seems fun. I love it. That's my, my childhood dream. Before athletics took over, I wanted to be a news reporter when I was a babe, like five years old. I watched the nightly business report and I purposely tried not to have a Boston accent like my mom did. <laughs> <laughs> Went to school for journalism. And then that dream, I guess, just, you know, I don't want to say it faded, but it just kind of was on the sideline when athletics took over. And then I, I had interviewed at a few places before and they told me that I was like, too big <laughs> to be a reporter so when I got the redemption like when I was on ESPN for the first time I was very very happy because it's one of those moments like in the pursuit of happiness when Will Smith says like don't ever let anyone right. tell you can't do something <laughs> I felt like that and I'm actually I have the Shaw Classic 
am doing WRPF and some um, the American big ones coming up. So my goal is to be like the strike, the reporter for strike sports. I want to be able to give people a voice because sometimes at like the Arnold or really big events, they have people that don't have any knowledge of strike. They don't know shit about yes, strongman. They, they don't. Yeah, exactly. And it they don't know it shit about strongman. Side. Yeah. Yeah. So, I have a dream to hopefully paint a picture and be able to showcase and ask the right questions and, you know, give the people, give these strength athletes the opportunity that they do. So if I can help, you know, translate that passion through like a media outlet, that would just, that actually drive, that drives me more now to do that than like my own athletic feats. Yeah, that's, that's uh, really cool. I could see that playing out that way too. I could see you be, you know, you having that uh, role at, at events like that, which that, that would be cool because I agree. I don't really like when they have someone that doesn't know, like that it's, it's like, yeah, they just pulled the relatively random guy, clueless. Yeah, they, right. And they give right, them like the you know, quick two hour rundown and say, all right, here, go do your thing. And it's, right. it's not authentic and you can tell. Or they always get the weights wrong. Like when I've watched over the years, they'll be like, oh, you were running with a, uh, 5,000 pound refrigerator. It's like, it was not 5,000 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> so you're doing the Shaw classic then. I am. That's I, I can officially say it now. I was keeping it in for a while, but yes, I am, which I feel like that's my, you know, ESPN was obviously very big, but yeah. I feel like this is huge. And I'm really excited that they have a woman doing it. Yeah, for sure. That's cool. We, we were really hoping to be there this year and uh, have a booth because they're having a expo, for, you know, having vendors and stuff for the first time, but didn't worry. We weren't able to w- with our schedule, but uh, hopefully you do it again next year and we can watch you in action there. What about uh, at, um, uh, have you at, uh, you probably mentioned, but at the Arnold, you didn't do that this year at the Arnold, did you, or did, were you doing it there? At the Arnold, I was actually just, um, so Dion Strongman Corporation president hired me to yeah. do like the media. So I was just doing more like social media stuff. They wanted okay. to do the live stream, but with the service, it just was a little unorganized. So, yeah. but I still could kind of consider that the same realm, you know, anything in the media, like I, I like. Right. Like it. And then you did, was it the ghost clash you were doing? comment mm-hmm. okay so is there so like with powerlifting versus strongman like that is a very different you know it's a very different activity there's a lot of different things is there one you prefer or like if you had to commentate on like that you would prefer over the other well i'm gonna be biased obviously because strongman is like what i did and it's mm-hmm. it's right it's more fun to speak on because it, it is changing so much but powerlifting is a little bit easier i guess for most just like from a data statistical standpoint, because I can look at everyone's numbers and it's very yeah. easy to tell the audience like, well, this person is lifting X number. Their previous PR is this, right? but I feel like I can have more personality with the strong man, but for, both are fun. Like I do get a rush out of both, especially interviewing athletes. Like after they do something crazy, mm-hmm. I, that's, that's the part I really like no matter what. And I feel like that's the same it would be the same whether I did it for like football or it's just like getting someone live and yeah. like passion in their eyes is probably my favorite aspect. Yeah, that's cool. Do you feel like you get nervous for it? Like, uh, especially the first times or is it, no. uh, feel like it comes pretty well? I feel like it comes very natural for me, which I was surprised by because when I did ESPN, I was a little nervous because there are certain things that people don't realize. Like I had my mic in and the first time I'm live, like someone's screaming at us because of the technical error. So trying not to show any like fluster. And then the only thing I get nervous for is sometimes people are so excited that I don't want them to say anything inappropriate. Like we had someone drop an F bomb on ESPN <laughs> and you know, I get yelled at like you need to control them, but it's, it's, yeah. you know, that part can be hard, but no, I don't really get, nervous so yeah and i think if you're pre- you know fairly prepared that kind of takes care of like uh some of that nervous stuff anyways I, you know if you know if you know what you're doing like the nerves aren't as big a, that there, nothing calms that as like like kind of knowing what you're doing i think is what, what i feel like in that situation honestly i kind of approach it like i did competing like i get really excited before and then like an hour or two before and then right before i just try and like deep you know, do some deep breaths and calm myself down. And then I feel very like honed in and almost hyper-focused. Yeah. Cool. We hope you see, see you doing more and more of that. Then that'll be cool. Thank you. Uh, 
one of the things that I was most excited to talk to you about, because I think it's really cool, is the new podcast that you have going uh, that you and Christy are doing together. And is it just your second episode now that uh, you've published? Yes. So we just published our second episode. We have four recorded and we're trying to release every other Thursday. And I give you guys so much credit because... (laughs) So we decided to start the podcast because, you know, Christy and I did the same thing for work. And as you well know, the social media algorithm has changed. Oh God. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. And I don't want to be, I'm not going to be negative because like we can't change social media, but you know, when I was like 25 and making content and just doing cool stuff, like Christy and I were killing it just by being ourselves. But now it's like, I don't want to be someone I'm not. Just, just to, to get, push the, al- please the algorithm. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So I'm like, you know, podcasts are going to appeal more to people that just aren't looking for a quick entertainment fix that actually want to learn. And it kind of goes hand in hand with the media reporting gigs. Yep. Mm-hmm. So yeah, so we are on the, like, we don't have a studio or any good equipment like you guys do. We just have our laptops and I just got this mic. Oh, there you go. Oh, yeah. Yep. yep. We got yep. some of those. Yep. Yep, that's a good mic to have. Yeah. Uh, I I thought it looked re- and you're I thought a, a a good thing that you're doing is it was in vi- available in video right away off of the gate, which I think uh, you should be in. It is in video on Spotify, which I think is is cool. I like that, and um, I think it's good. And I I like the name. I think that that I think you chose a good name, and it's is it because it's barbells, business, and boobs, right? Yeah. So yeah. we, you know, we were, we were stuck on the name for a while. I have, we have a whole list. We kept going back and forth and we wanted to be taken seriously. So we didn't really want to use the boobs in there, but then we were like, you know what? We still have to be a little click baby. Right. So yeah. Oh yeah. It's, the, it. yeah. it's like the perfect hook. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's good. That's, I, that is what it is. It's like, yeah, you, I get that too. Cause you don't want to be click baby, but at the same time you want people to click. Yeah. So um, it just reminds me of a name of a, I think this is what I told the Tommy. It just reminds me of the name of a podcast that, uh, has, you know, if you're just looking at a name, like that's the name of a podcast that I could see being popular, you know, like Thank that's a you. good, uh, I think that that's a good choice. I think it's good to include the boobs in there. I, I, <laughs> I'm glad you did that. <laughs> we figured, and we did video too, because Christy and I both are kind of exhausted from, you know, there's a part about making content that's part of my job that I love, but like anything, when I feel forced to do it, I feel like that robs me of my creativity. So we wanted to do video so that we could literally just use it on our Instagram. Because again, I sometimes think about my business and I'm like, okay, what's going to happen in 10 year years? Like I'll be 40, which I'm not saying 40 years old, but like, am I still going to be just filming myself lifting and making protein shakes and right. making weird things <laughs> outside? Like, I don't know. <laughs> I'm sure I will, but I don't know if any 40 year olds are going to be drawn to that. Yeah. That is the thing you never know. Like, and we've talked about this before is like, everything has a shelf life, you know, everything like eventually you have to change, but yeah, you just, you never know when that is like, who knows when you're, when you're 45, people could be like, no, this is great. She's 45 and does this. Can you believe it? Like you could just come all the way back around. I would love, I told Christy, I was talking to you guys. We would love to do one together because. Oh yeah. Count the us dynamic. In. Yeah. yeah. When we talked about it too, that we haven't had Christy on and we want to get her on too, but we also kind of wanted to get you each individually on too, because you know, some of this it's, we we've done it like say with uh Huck Finn and uh, Tom Callis, they have a podcast together. We've had them on individually and we've done it together with them too, because it's both ways are different. Like when we talk to you personally, we get to talk to you about a lot of more of the stuff that we talked to you tonight and Mm -hmm. when we do it together, it's, it's fun in a different way, but we don't get as much of that, like, you know, the, the actual personal stuff. So that's cool. Um, so what do you feel like, uh, you've recorded four episodes. Like we talk about it with our, we've been doing it for a really long time and our original ones are awful in comparison. (laughs) You know, I mean, not that we're great at it (laughs) now, now, but it's just like, kind of not the best, (laughs) but then they were really bad. (laughs) Yeah. Right. Right. So they certainly got better, but it's just, it's fun to look back on that. Do you feel like even four or five episodes in, you're already picking up on uh, things that you're like, ah, this seems to work. You know, this is an avenue we can go down more like that feels awkward or uncomfortable or like you learning stuff so far like that. So we just decided that we're going to have 
like a like almost more of a system because we're trying to educate right so it's different when you're interviewing someone and it flows naturally we want to be able to like make points because one of our we were doing one the other day like on online coaching and we we hit the points but I feel like now that I'm listening to more podcasts that are like educational it's like okay you have to keep saying the points and like follow more of a guideline so we're going to do that and my favorite, we actually released one today that I think was really good. It was a fun one. You know, some of them are a little like when we were talking about injuries and stuff, that one kind of got a little dark because we both like talked about how depressed we've gotten from them and stuff. But today sure. was, it was a really fun one. We did one today talking about how people can make money from social media and like the difference between influencing and sponsorship and how you pick working with brands. So that was a really fun one because to this day, like I'm still... I'm really proud of myself that, you know, I don't come from that much. I'm the first person in my family, like go to college. The fact that I like left my hometown and like make a living that my parents don't really even understand. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. It's like unconventional yeah. Yeah. By, yeah. by older people's standards for sure. <laughs> yeah. So that was fun today. Yeah, that's cool. And I, I listen, I've listened to the first episode and I liked it. And you talked about, I think somewhere in there, you talked about, uh, both you talked about some of your ideas of future episodes that you're gonna, mm-hmm. gonna do. And I'm like, ah, oh, there's some really good topic ideas in there. And like, um, do you feel like, uh, I don't know if taboo is the right word, but you talked about some stuff you're going to talk that you're going to do in future episodes that like some people might choose. They might be like, ah, oh, I don't know if we want to talk about that. Yeah. So we're definitely, yeah. I mean, I can be open on your podcast. We definitely right. we want to wait until we work out some of the kinks, but we're going to do an in-depth steroid one because we both feel we have a similar mindset on it. And I feel like everyone's talking about it now. Yeah. And there's some really bad information out there. So I want to talk about that. Yeah. And it's, it's a really, I we almost get like a rush out of it because we, I have to be careful because it's like, okay, by me talking about this, this is now me literally committing to only working for myself for the rest of my life. Because once it's out there, it's out. And that is frowned upon, you know, in the business world. Right, right, right. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, that's cool. I'll be excited to listen to those. And something else you guys brought up was talking about uh, breast augmentation uh, decisions and stuff like that for women in lifting, which uh, from the dudes, you know, the average dude's perspective, they have a diff- uh, different take on it, but actually like women that are in the sports and like competing in it, like it'd be interesting to hear your guys' take on, you know, what it, what it means, what, you know, why you do it, why you don't do it, all that stuff. Yeah. That's how we originally started the podcast. Christy and I, we were doing ESPN together. Um, when was it? April? And we noticed that all the women just kept asking us like in person, like, can we ask you guys something? So we were like, why don't we just do an Instagram live? And then we did an Instagram live and people were like, you guys should start a podcast. So I texted Christy. I'm like, Hey, you wanted to start a podcast? Yeah. <laughs> so we did. <laughs> Yeah, that's cool. Awesome. Well, so you're doing every other week because that's the plan every other Thursday? That's the plan. We're trying to release. We try to record every Monday or Wednesday, depending on our schedules, and then release every other Thursday. Yeah. Yeah, I think as long as you can stick to trying to keep pumping them out every other week, that's the bit. That's the probably the hardest part for everyone that does it is just like uh, sticking, sticking to it because it seems like the recipe is there for it to be uh, work out really well for you. So as long as you can keep doing it, I think it'll be awesome. Thank you. Yeah. I think like anything, just being consistent. And cr- I told Christy, she's the only woman or only person or friend, even I would do any type of business with, because I know she's just like me where she has like workaholic tendencies and she wants to be good. Cause I didn't want to, I was the girl, you know, in high school and college that like did all the, like, if there was a group project, I did it all. <laughs> and I, you know, I have <laughs> clients to take care of and responsibilities and a roof to keep over my head so I wanted this project to be fair and it's perfect because she is like amazing like she was a former she went to art school so she did the graphics she's a little more tech savvy than me even though she doesn't think she is she is so she figured out like what platform we like the best that I do more of like the writing parts of it and like the outlines so yeah that's good that's what you need in a party like you need someone that like can balance you out and have some things that you don't have and that's that's, Mm -hmm. that's the best way to do it we went a different approach. We're just like both bad at everything. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah. this, uh... <laughs> Oh, you have long hair. I do too. Okay. I think that's something, right? <laughs> oh, you guys are doing awesome. 
I'm gonna have to get some offline tips from you because we're using something called Riverside, and for the life of us, we can't figure out like Apple Podcasts. We can only figure yep. out Spotify and YouTube. <laughs> yeah, we've been down yeah, that road. We do. Yeah, yeah we, we've got some experience in that yeah. stuff. And where <laughs> Tommy is definitely, you know, you said Christy is tech savvy. Tommy is definitely the te- tech savvy one of us. But we have, uh, I've even experienced enough of it that I have have <laughs> some. Uh, yeah, <laughs> we struggle. We had some struggles with Riverside too, but a lot other people use it effectively. Uh, you know, I know like uh, Jim McD uh, and Mike Silent, Silent Mike, Mike. They use it fifty percent uh, yeah. facts, and they use it and have had success with it, and a few other ones that have. So I think it can be made to work, but it didn't work very well for what we were trying to do. I would say that. The other day we were recording an episode, and like eight minutes through it just like stopped working. So we mm-hmm. had to like redo it. And I feel like that kind of, you know how when oh, you have to that redo just kills that sucks. Yeah, it kills that momentum. Sucks. Like you're like, yeah, I have yeah. to, now I'm like acting to, to say the thing before. <laughs> yeah. Now we're just repeating authentic. the things we said yeah. naturally, but now yeah. it's like we, and I know what you're going to say and you know what I'm going to say. And, yeah. Exactly. So we might redo that one because then it felt forced and it was a sad episode anyways. So yeah. I feel like I'm off. we've been kind of lucky that there's in like 377 episodes, we've maybe had to repeat. We've had to do that. I well, think the worst like one ever. Time. We did, probably yeah. the biggest mistake we ever made is there was one episode Tanner was on with Jonathan. I think yeah. we were 25 minutes in before I realized we never hit record. <laughs> and then oh. it was like, oh, okay, here we go. Shit. So, yeah, yeah. That, that sucked. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. besides yeah. that, nothing too major as far as problems go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, learning process. Yeah. Yeah. Now, so you uh, offer coaching, obviously, and another interesting thing uh that i we saw when we were looking is you had like you and we were talking about here but you you were advertising your uh vegas rucking meetup mm-hmm. so is that what you were talking about the bi-weekly thing or is this more of a specific event that like people could sign up for so this like, is just a free event i do okay. literally just to make friends okay and everything in vegas like i went to a few groups networking groups everything is so salesy here and where i have to be salesy online i wanted something just authentic and i've met really cool like i've met all walks of life like one time i had and it was 5 a.m i was like no one will come i had like 20 people one was a guy from portugal that was traveling the world someone was like some 50 year old woman who just got divorced and i had a bunch of like young kids younger kids like in their 20s that just left the military so it was really cool to have such a melting pot so no I don't I just do that for for companionship to meet people and yeah I'm just someone I like I keep myself busy I like to be doing multiple multiple at once okay well that's cool uh I don't know if I if I could do that, I'd be too one do be too curious about who's going to show up and what is, you know what is, if it's going to be weird or not. You know, I'd be like, oh, I don't know who's going to be there. It was so funny because I'm so used to being alone in the morning and like I'm a morning person, but not when it comes to talking to people. So when I did the five, we had we had to be we had to meet up at like five a.m. So I woke up at like four twenty to be there because sunrise. And at the top, because sometimes I do like a little like guided meditation, nothing crazy. And I was like, oh, maybe we can just skip this today. You know, it's pretty early. And then some people were like, no, we really want you to do it. So I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We have this uh, game we play with every guest that we have on called Overrated, Underrated. And we've got a special hand-picked set of Brittany Diamond topics just for you that we're going to read off to you. And it's your job to decide if each one is overrated or underrated. Uh, the most important thing you have to remember, though, is that you can't ride the line. You have to definitively, definitively say if each one is overrated or underrated. Okay. So and just my opinion of it, right? Yep. Yeah, yep. just your opinion. Like, however you want to, people look at it a different way. Sometimes people say, like, uh, what do I, like, here's what I think people think of it. So is it overrated or underrated in yeah, comparison I've, I've to how people before, think? So. Right, right, right. <laughs> yes. Okay, so overrated or underrated. And I'm going to change one or two of these because we kind of talked about it, uh, some of them a little bit already. So I'm going to change overrated or underrated. Uh, the state of Rhode Island. Underrated. Okay. So you live, you are not, you are Massachusetts is where you live, but you went to college in Rhode Island. Yeah. And then I lived there after I went to Massachusetts for a while. And then I lived in Rhode Island for like a little bit. I actually lived in the woods pretty much alone with my dog in Rhode Island and thought I was staying there forever, but that's a story for a different day. (laughs) So there, there so, are woods in Rhode Island, though. Yeah. Oh yeah, there's so there's so much oh, woods. I just assumed how small was like, it was yeah. just like one giant city. That's a, my assumption. No. 
No, what? I was like Walden out there. Like I just rocked with Rosie in the woods every day. Like it felt like we were in the middle of nowhere, but we were in a small state. So, so what, what college was it in Rhode Island then uh, that you went to? University of Rhode Island. Okay. Is that where, I don't know if you know him, but well, Brandon Diamond, you're not related to him, I assume, no. right? Because he's also from Rhode Island, so that would be a no, small no world. But okay, but he went to. Uh, we've had him on the podcast. He, I know he flies a Rhode, one of the Rhode Island college flags. See, I could, it's probably I could tell you where he went to. Yeah. Right? Okay. Okay. All right. Um, overrated or underrated? The Hercules hold. Underrated too. Oh, it's so awesome! I wish they had more <laughs> of that stuff. <laughs> So was grip, uh, are you, are you, were you kind of good at all the grip events or, I mean, is that a strong point for you? Yeah, I, I believe because and even now after having wrist surgery, my grip is still really strong. Everyone automatically thinks that you must have huge hands and then my hands are pretty tiny. I think because I was a rower and like, we have to turn the oar a certain way. So, and then like we would actually do a lot of rice buckets and like forearm training. So I think doing that for four years really helped me. And then just having the course, like, so it's, it's a lot of core too. People don't realize that. Um, right. Yeah, that was definitely, I've never lost ever a Hercules hold. There, I've had three of them at high levels and I always have easily won. So is that your favorite strongman event or do you have anything you'd place above that? Um, stones are my favorite. Okay. okay. Yeah. Uh, that's a good one to have so, as your favorite too. Cause like it's that's like the whole the skill of strongman is like lifting a stone up. And that's why I still do it. I call it like odd lift du jour where I just go out and like lift rocks. I mean, that's exactly what the appeal to strongman is. So, Okay. So overrated or underrated. Um, this is a song and I assume you'll have it. You assume that based on something I saw that you'll have an answer for this and it'll mean something to you, but if not, let me know. We'll change it. Overrated <laughs> or underrated? Hunger Strike by Temple of the Dog. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Un- underrated. I love that. I feel like all my answers have been underrated. Yeah, that's a really yeah, special a- song to me. Yeah. Okay. Because you, you want me to elaborate? Well, or- you had a, I just <laughs> thought that was a really interesting song that you had because you had a, like your posing routine to that song. And I'm like, oh, yeah. that's a cool, like that's, I wouldn't be the song I would initially think of as a posing routine for that. And I just, I thought that was cool. Yeah, so the song is actually, a, if you look at the lyrics, it's about, like, slavery and being held captive, um, but I didn't know that when I was a little girl, and I remember, so my mom's obsessed with, like, that grunge era of rock, like, Pearl yeah. Jam, like, audio slave, jamming out, and I was born in 1992, and my mom got divorced, and for a while, it was just me and her, and I just remember her, like, being a strong-ass bitch, like... <laughs> I remember like everything in her day would go wrong and she was like struggling to keep afloat, but she always made sure like me and her had fun. So she had this Camaro and we would blast that song and no matter what, she was just always so happy. So when I did bodybuilding, it was just a journey that it felt different than strongman. Like, cause I didn't necessarily want to do bodybuilding. I just kind of wanted to prove to myself I could and so yeah I surprised her with that song like I wouldn't tell her what the song was she was trying to guess she was nowhere close she's like oh it's Christina Aguilera it's Lady Gaga (laughs) and so yeah so being able to pose to that song like yeah it just it was really I actually want to get a tattoo of it but yeah and it was so funny because people were trying to figure out what the song meant and I remember someone was like oh it's because you were hungry I get it and I'm like (laughs) you're in a cut yeah Yeah. too literal (laughs) yeah (laughs) Yeah. Because I think it, for me, it just meant like losing ego and like not really caring what anyone thought and just marching to the beat of your own drum. I think That's picking the posing part. routine song would be the funnest part about bodybuilding. It was. It was. And I was <laughs> so, that was, that was the one thing at first I never in my life, because, you know, I did strongman and strength sports. We didn't look in the mirror. I didn't care what I really looked like. And so it was different to focus on that aspect of it. But I, yeah, I fell in love with the posing routine because I never thought I'd be able to get half naked on stage and like, essentially you're like dancing, right? <laughs> but yeah, yeah. That's a weird thought of anything about it like that too. And, and then getting judged oh. for it too. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but I tried to make mine, you know, non-sexual and like very beautiful. And yeah. it's the first thing I can say, because usually you look at yourself and you judge yourself, you know, you're on your worst critic, but like, I can look back at my posing routine and I think I owned it. So yeah. I'm proud of that. 
Right on. Okay, last one, and last one's always worth all the marbles, so very important, your decision on this one. Overrated or underrated, the Ninja Creamy, I think, is is that what it's called? The Ninja? Yeah, the, I think okay. it's overrated <laughs> if you pay full price. Uh, how much is it? You got to get the deal. Huh? I think it's like $200 if you go on uh, Amazon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, the, so two, the 200 is the full price, or that's the deal? Yeah, that's the full price. Okay, okay. okay. So is it, it's just, it's, it's basically like an ice cream maker then, right? Or like, what yeah. is the Ninja Creamy? So it is, it is kind of magical in the sense that like you make a protein shake taste like ice cream. I haven't tried it with like a full fat one yet. I'm going to do that next week when my friend's visiting. So we're going to do like, you know, like real cream and like real candy knots. Cause I've only made it with like protein shakes and stuff like that. And the reason I'm saying it's underrated, is like, it's cool. But like, if you're in the mood for ice cream, you just want ice cream. Mm-hmm. You have to like really plan it out because you have to like put it in the freezer a couple, like six to eight hours before and then take it out. So it defrosts. So I don't know. So that's kind of why I would say it's underrated. <laughs> But so do you, that. do you like routinely make shakes with it though? Like, does it make good protein shakes? It does make really good protein shakes, but usually I put my protein shakes in like my oats or my cream of mm. rice. Yeah. If you're a bodybuilder on prep, it's definitely probably perfect because yeah. <laughs> yeah. An essential tool for that job. I could see that. But right now I don't just eat protein shakes luckily. So. <laughs> right. 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 Oh, good news. It looks like you passed overrated, underrated. So congratulations. It's a big How deal. You, can you fail? Well, Nobody uh, has yet, yeah, but we all, it's possible. possible. <laughs> it is a pass fail course. And uh, you did uh, pass. If someone fails, we always say that means we're not going to air the episode. So uh, oh, lucky okay. for you, you passed and we are going to publish this one then. So okay. this wasn't, this wasn't all just for hanging out and talking to us for like an hour for no good reason. So perfect. <laughs> And you uh, hit record. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, red good. lights. Thank God. Yeah. That I bet that'll happen to you someday. You'll be like, you'll be like that far into it. And you're like, Oh, great. We forgot to record. Yeah, I'll think of you guys. And I'll let yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So where, where do people find you, check you out? Uh, if they want to ask you about coaching or anything else that they should ask you about, where do they, what, what do they need to do? Instagram and Facebook. It's just B dimes. Those are my pages. I don't do TikTok or any of that stuff. I've tried. I can't do it. So yeah, Instagram Same. is probably the best. Yeah. <laughs> we're older. We're not, <laughs> we're not 18. <laughs> it's tough. Yeah. It's tough. It's uh, it's a young kid's do, game. <laughs> right. Right. It's like back in my day, we just had Instagram like God intended. <laughs> we just took pictures. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Okay, cool. Well, I think this is awesome. I think people yeah. are going to enjoy this a lot and we really appreciate you coming on and, uh, and doing this with us. Yeah, thanks, yeah, a lot, thanks for having me, guys. Thank you. Yeah. If you've ever uh if you've ever got any questions for us, we probably don't have good answers, but we'll we'll do our best <laughs> to help. Sounds good. Yeah, and I would love to come up there at some time in my life. Hey, uh, o- open invitation, Massonomics Gym. Do- uh, we also tell every guest they do get a free day pass to Massonomics Gym. So that's also <laughs> a, a really great reward for being on the show. You know what would be cool if you record with Christy and then us both come up together. That would be a goal. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. That yeah, would be we could, we That could would be awesome. Film some stuff okay. in the gym too. We could make all types of I don't know. Stuff. South Dakota, you might not want to come in January. It's a little <laughs> bit different than California and Las Vegas, but uh I I actually like this I like the cold and the snow. I miss it. <laughs> it's gonna be weird when I go home and like do see snow again, but no, I love I love that. I love cold weather. Well, we got lots of it here, so <laughs> yeah, you would love it here then. Yeah. It'll be your favorite place. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. Awesome. Well, we appreciate it. That'll be, that'll be fun. And we'll be, uh, we'll be excited to watch, uh, watch your podcast. Keep taking off. Thank you guys. Have an awesome night. Yeah. It's your super late there, isn't it? Uh, 1030. Yeah. You guys have to go to bed. <laughs> yeah. It's past our bedtimes, but we do, we're, we make it happen once a week where we off our sleep schedule. Well, thank you. Thanks for all being. right. Thank you. See ya. Bye. All right. I mean, I almost hit leave meeting right there. For uh, some reason. I was, was about very like... close to hitting that button first. Um, <laughs> Speaking here, of hitting the wrong Bef- button. Before I forget, podcasts. before I forget. Cool, cool beans. beans. Cool I was. Um, th- we she kinda... said she likes it cold, so cool beans is perfect. <laughs> those are, yeah, those are frosty yeah. Northeast South Dakota beans. 
Um, yeah. I was this five minutes into our interview having a mild panic attack because for the first time ever, I had a red blinking screen on our podcast board here. And I looked and, oh, I forgot to erase the card before we got started. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so this part right now is just going to be coming from the Zoom recording, which luckily we have. Oh, that. otherwise, yeah. otherwise, but that's there, fine. Then, I don't yeah. think there's a way while you're recording on on the road board to delete old things. Right. I think you'd have to. Right. right. And I don't think you can. I don't think you can selectively delete episodes. I mean, maybe there's a way. We always just but that'll be fine. That won't yeah. matter for well, our. So idea. this this people listening right now, this might not sound quite as good as normal because it's going to be coming through Zoom. But you know, honestly, funny. for most people, they won't notice the difference. No, they but, won't. Yeah, listening yeah. on like your speaker on your iPhone now, that you, you right. probably won't. But uh, we're talking about all these things. You're like, oh yeah, you mess up a lot, and then like literally while it's going on, I'm like, yeah, I'm messing up right now. So <laughs> <laughs> real life example. We just wanted to make the example really real. Yeah, here su- tonight. super relevant. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, that was fun. She is a she is a good guest. Uh, that that'd be something if those two came here to train at Massonomics Gym for <laughs> yeah. for a day. Yeah. Oh yeah, it'd be fun. I mean, we could. We don't I mean we'd make a ton of content for sure. Yes. Um, yes. Uh, we're talking. Uh, we're we encourage anyone that ever wants to come up to uh, Western Northeast South Dakota and uh, either just to check out the gym to hang out a little bit, or if you're into the content game sort of thing, we're working with some other people that there might be something coming up. Uh, in the not too far future with that, we, we welcome uh, all oncomers, especially since we've uh, expanded our YouTube game and are putting mm-hmm. out uh, uh, videos every week with that. Like it offers us, us an additional opportunity to make something out of it for ourselves. So hopefully you see more and more of things like that happening in the future too. Yep. Got to keep feeding that content machine, right? <laughs> yeah. Like Grant always likes to tell me though, he's like, Kudos to you on the Lift Hard Leave Easy Classic and getting all those people to come there because <laughs> Aberdeen is the hardest place to get to. He's like, I mean this as a compliment. Yeah. Aberdeen is so hard to get to. Uh, I know, I know. I, you, when you told me that, I thought it was funny. And then yeah. I told my wife and she was yeah. like, yeah, it, it is insane. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, it is. You got to try. You don't get. You don't wind up here on accident. No, you know? no, you do not get there on accident. <laughs> well, the way you get there on accident is like if you're leaving. Uh, I don't know <laughs> northeastern Minnesota and coming. Yeah, you're going west. Maybe if maybe if you're like Payne Stewart, I think he wound up here. Yeah, on well, accident one okay, time. okay. <laughs> so there was someone that got there on accident and. Uh, yeah, that's a very a deep cut dark but yeah, yeah. That that's a very deep best. dark joke right there actually that's a very like, that's deep a dark joke dark it's... humor that most people would get but you it's... just google Payne stewart and you figure out the rest speaking of deep dark jokes there's been a lot of uh a lot of jokes and memes about this sub thing the last i was thinking here. of making a one for tomorrow morning i was thinking of uh um here's the joke it's a picture of uh the sub and then it's like uh uh got five openings left for uh and then what's five douchey type people, uh, gym stereotype people where you're like, uh, <laughs> looking for the next five, uh, um, mm, you know what I, you know what I'm saying? Do you, do you understand? No, I get what you're saying. On this? I, yeah. Like I got five open seats. I can seats also just on... see like, uh, coach, coach, uh, I only have five pro uh, five spots left for my program and it's like the program and it's a picture of the sub. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, yes, right, right, Something right. like that, yeah, but... Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I like that, actually. Uh, people, I that is, that's a very trendy meme at the moment, as tragic as right. it is. That is, a, that is a trendy meme. Uh, the funniest one I saw so far, I think, was just a picture of a, a Titanic. You've probably seen this one, and it had, like, the death count of whatever it was, and then it was crossed off in, like, a red marker, and then the, the number was five higher. Oh, and I, did, I did not see that one. <laughs> I'm like, it's a little too soon for that, but also like yeah. it made me laugh out loud too. Yeah. Like, not I, I mean, that's so that weird closely. though. Like it is tragic without a doubt. Right. Like, it is, right. Like that would be, but it's also a joke right now at the same time. I know. I, like it that's why it, it's just so absurd in every way. Like, yes, it is tragic. No one should ever have to have a family member die in like a tragic accident, especially right. something that's weird and crazy like this. But right. at the same time, like this thing is so insane. Like you have, you're going down that far in like this sketchy ass submarine to go look at the Titanic. Like, no, we get, don't we have videos of that, that did that for you? It's that's man. Would uh, you ever want to go in a submarine? Is that like on your to-do list ever? No, no me never. either. You could not, uh, you couldn't pay me 
Uh, well, I mean, you could actually, there is a number that's a baby, but um, <laughs> to be fair, you, there there is a big enough number out there that you could pay me to do that, but no, I do not want to do that. It's also mind-blowing to me someone. that there's a whole branch of the military that just has people that are They've hiding stuck in under submarines there for a long time. all over the that earth. That would be awful. Does, that would be awful. Is that just insane, though? That would be hell oh, to me. God. Like, uh, it would Especially be. as like a larger than average size person. You know things aren't made for, you know, not that I'm... Um, not a, not that I'm a, uh, a giant, Hathor Bjornson, yeah. but like just being like even six three, like mm-hmm. I feel like I feel like that's not accommodating to that. It's just what my assumption is, and uh, oh. no, I don't. I'm not claustrophobic, but I also don't want to be in. I don't want to. I would be sitting there thinking like, where's our air going? Like, and, and why? Like, where the hell on earth are we right now? And how far <laughs> away is the surface? Like, if we uh, died, would anyone really even know? Besides, like. The one military but, base that knows where we're at. And I just don't like, I don't want to be in close quarters with that many people for that long. It's just like being on an airplane where I'm like, I don't yeah. want, I'm, I it's like the three like hour breathing in the plenty. same air that we're all breathing <laughs> yeah. in together here for this amount of time. I'm like, uh-huh. that uh, doesn't, doesn't seem healthy or good. Yeah. So submarines overrated. <laughs> it's like, uh, like the Beatles said one time, <laughs> we all live in a yellow submarine. <laughs> That's deep. Get it? I do. <laughs> yes. It's a dad joke. <laughs> ah, that reminds me. This episode, actually, I don't know if it's time for an ad read, but I'm just, you know what? I'm feeling, I'm just feeling it. It's flowing through me. So Sock the yellow of spudding, yeah, the yellow of spudding is coursing through my veins right now. Check out Spud Inc. over at spud-ink-straps.com. Spud Inc. started because the lifting straps avail about the time we're not tough enough to handle the daily punishment that comes with training as a power lifter or that could easily fit in your gym bag. Spud Inc., thank God, created their straps to withstand whatever your training puts them through. Finally, they got training gear that just works as hard as you do. Whether you're looking for belts, harnesses, deadlift straps, belt squat belts, the bow tie, uh, by Donnie Thompson, pretty much any of that stuff, Spud Inc. has you covered. If you can throw it in your gym, gym bag, if it's a wrap, a strap, a sleeve, any of that stuff, Spud Inc. has got it. Check them out at spud-inc-straps.com. they got free shipping on all domestic orders of $75 or more. Let them know that your good buddies at Massonomics sent you. And today's episode is also brought to you by Texas Power Bars. Buddy Caps first started lifting weights. Actually, I should say Texas Power Bars as seen in the – Parbell guessing game on the Massonomics YouTube channel. Good call. Check it out. Uh, Buddy Caps first started lifting weights in the late 60s and began powerlifting in the mid-70s. At the time, he was working for Image Barbell building gym equipment. Around 1976, a local machine shop started making Olympic bars for them, calling it the Image Bar. In 1977, Image Barbell became champion barbell. It was then that Buddy started looking at the bars with an intent of changing them for the better. In 1979, Buddy bought his first lathe to begin addressing the known issues. In 1980, his passion, drive, and purpose now had a greater mission. Buddy set out on his own to make what he believed was the greatest bar he'd ever seen and trained with, and the Texas Power Bar was born. It was strong as a house with the best knurling and was maintenance-free. Hundreds of state, national, international, and world powerlifting records have been and continue to be set and broken on the Texas Power Bar. To learn more about Texas Power Bars and buy one of their legendary bars, Visit TexasPowerBars.com. Did you notice when we were talking with Brittany there, my I froze for just like a little bit in the middle of overrated, underrated, or did you? You guys I, were still talking when I came oh, back, so I, I didn't. I didn't see you freeze, but I guess okay. I have to. I have to. The way I record for Zoom, you can only record the screen of whoever's talking unless you pin oh, that screen. Okay, so I pin her so it's large. So you're such a tiny little. Thing yeah, that I, I wouldn't have noticed. But, I so guess. there was never a there was never a time when you thought like, oh, I'm surprised Tanner's not responding to something because I think it was like the second over under. This would be interesting for any, everyone listening because they would have just listened to this. I think it was a response to the second over under. I froze for almost a whole thing and I came back and you guys were still talking and then I just, <laughs> being the professional that I am, I just said. <laughs> All right, next, you know, I was just like, no, I'm like I, I, I never uh, noticed yeah. anything. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> so, I was worried you guys were like, oh, is he there? Yeah. Where's, you know, what's he doing? Nope, and uh, just rolling with the punches. I, I didn't see anything. Okay. <laughs> uh, that's that's how professional we are here. We mess a couple things up here, that's and right. you don't even know it. Other Tanner than us. freezes. I forget to yeah. clear space on my card. You know, 
all that. Yeah. We have several other topics here today. Um, I did have an interesting piece of Taco John's news that I guess oh, I, it's please, maybe yes, timely in a way. Share. So I yes. want to get it out there. And it is Taco John's. So that's important. Mm-hmm. Uh, and this came to me from a uh, meat director of the Lift Hard Leave Easy Classic is Big Dave, uh, resident of Fargo, North Dakota, our neighbors to the north here, not too far, just a jaunt, jaunt, uh, jaunt up the interstate from us. And we've had Fargo Taco John's before, if you remember oh, yeah. the last we, meet yes. that we did there. Uh, big Jonathan yep. Oldham. Jonathan, after driving through 30 other places, finally arrived at Taco John's. <laughs> yeah, because for some reason everything was closed in yes. Fargo. Like yeah. All the nearby after, places After a point were... in time that the pandemic was not relevant anymore. In yeah, this that was a very odd... T- yeah, that was yeah. weird thing about. And uh, he got us some Taco John's, so we got our... We, olay, we were able to olay the day, thank, mm-hmm. thankfully. Um, but... Dave hit me with some disturbing news, very disturbing Taco John's news. There was, uh, he sent me the article link to this, and I had to even do a little research on it. There, I believe Fargo had five Taco John's locations. Yeah. Had five Taco John's locations. <laughs> and and they're they all have gone. eight now? <laughs> they're all gone? Zero. What? Du- they all closed. What? Yeah, they all closed. Wow. Which, uh, and he had said they'd been like drive through only. Like they never can't like stop being drive through only, I think. Really? Which, and he said like on the same, they all close like, and I saw the news stories and the pictures, they all had like taped uh, marker I mean, signs that were like closed for business. That's just bad management, right? It has to be. I assume they are owned by the same person. I'm like, Taco John's isn't doing bad business. Like Taco John's have to make money everywhere. You know, like, have you ever been to a Taco John's and not have the drive through line be... I mean, you know, I mean, like they're, I would say if there's a home run around here, it's that. Yeah. Like they especially thrive in smaller areas too, I think, because not as many places will go there. Like now I definitely live in a bigger market where there's 10 billion choices, but But there's probably several Taco Taco John's. Yeah. But there's Taco John's around. There's actually, it's the the closest fast food place to me is there's a, there's a, a Burger King and across the street is a Taco John's. I will put an asterisk on it though and say that that Taco John's is in a gas station, which talking, uh, with, talking with my wife is like, why no, is it no. that you can take a Taco John's and you don't think it's gross at all? And then the second it's in yeah, a gas station, like, a gas yeah. station like, no, <laughs> yeah, second guess it. but yeah, there um, are, I mean, there's Taco John's around. I, I, if they started closing in Sioux Falls, I would be totally shocked. Yeah. Um, and, and possibly the most interesting thing I picked up in those new dark news articles is they, the reporters couldn't f- confirm this, but they, had reports that uh the employees need not be worried because the F- taco john's owner was in talks with the uh company that owns papa john's in fargo and that the papa john's uh, uh locations would be able to absorb any employees looking for a jo- job so that made me wonder if the johns are in cahoots <laughs> between taco and papa that that and this is real i'm not making this up that it said that uh that papa john that it sounded like the papa john's restaurants would be able to absorb the taco john's employees wow (laughs) i mean it just kind of just seems like easier like no just to run your taco john's like all the other ones that make money but (laughs) whatever i guess yeah yeah i was looking here this article from the uh i don't know somewhere in fargo in forum it says they, what was I looking at here? The number of Taco John's, where did it go? Where'd it go? I lost it. I can't find yeah. it. They had the total number of Taco John's. Oh, here we go. Uh, okay. Taco John's 370 restaurants in 23 States. That's not a small franchise. No, that's a lot. Well, that's something. Mm. Not in that's Fargo something. though, apparently. No, I feel sorry for those sons of guns up there. How are they supposed to lay the day? <laughs> well, I guess taco, they have to just think about the Taco Tuesdays of the past because they can't have that anymore. Christmas is uh, going to be uh, a, little a little less little sadder around there with yep. uh, no nachos Navidad. So the chips will be a little less festive this Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> just, Santa apparently figured that the Fargo is on the naughty list this year, it sounds like. I'll just be dreaming of Whiplash the Cowboy Monkey. <laughs> <laughs> Or we all those? Well, the rest of us get to live, <laughs> live that whiplash life. 
<laughs> yes. Did you have uh, anything? Yeah, I mean, you have several things here that I don't know what any of them um, are. I don't so, know. Uh, we can probably talk yeah. about them. None of these are time sensitive at all. I, okay. Talking about food, you know what? One thing that did after my trip that I'm kind of shocked that does not exist in our part of the country at all is grits. I can't believe yeah. that grits just do not do not exist. I could actually couldn't yeah. even give you it. If you asked me a week ago what grits were, I couldn't even give you an honest answer. Like I have no idea. I'm it, soured on grits because they had those in all the military chow halls oh. and it was just slop. It was, I'm sure they're not yeah, good grits. That. I'm sure they were like the most subpar grits that exist, but Probably. I'm like, I would take oatmeal a thousand times over you, well, grits. And the, I guess the times I had, I am by no means a grits. I've, I've had now I had grits like three times in my life. Yeah. And to me, it's just like, uh, it's like a creamy cornbread basically. Like that's, yeah. Um, I'm just soured. On, honestly, I, I really think I'm just soured on it from like the chow hall. Yeah. Uh, oh, and I could totally see how crap, if they had some crap. bad, like soupy gross right. ones or a lot of yes. them too, how it could gross you out. But Man, after having that, I'm like, I do not get how that just doesn't like absolutely does. Oh, it doesn't at all. Like, like you, you don't couldn't, go, that you couldn't live exist. in Aberdeen you and say, let's go to a restaurant. You have to find me a restaurant with grits. I'll give you $10,000. You just have it's to say, it's not one. You wouldn't even have to think about it. You just say, well, I just can't win this prize. Right. I don't even know living in Sioux Falls. That's what I was going to say in Sioux Falls. You could probably, I'm sure it exists somewhere, but it probably uh, does. I'd have to do some major looking though to find right. a place that has it. Right. Oh yeah, for sure. It does not exist. Yeah. That was my first exposure to it is when I went to basic training and, uh, that was one of the men, you know, daily menu items. I'm like, this is crap. Who's eating this? <laughs> this is garbage. This is garbage food. This isn't food. This <laughs> bring is garbage. Me the, bring me the, the vomit. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> bring me the MRE vomit. Now nah, I would probably take grits, uh, chow hall grits over, over MRE vomit. The vomit <laughs> has, is still in a class of its own, in my opinion. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, what, did, what did we get to eat that day? I can't, what did we get sent? I can't even remember the meal now. Was it like um, something? We, beef? we had, to, we had two, like we each had a patty. meal. Yeah. We, you had the beef patty, I think yeah, probably. I think so. Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. So we talked about the Jefferson deadlift competition quite a bit. Yeah. Uh, please yeah, get involved. On yeah. for that. The official uh, starting, starting post, but we kind of talked about those dates and it, it's going to, we give, there's a couple two it covers the dates cover two weekends there. And we wanted it that way. So it gives you like optimal chance. So people could to, start a peak and really prepare and peak for this. Right. That's the, you have a whole, f you have blocks and phases all around <laughs> yeah. this Jefferson we deadlift give you competition. enough time to have a hypertrophy phase, a strength phase and a peaking phase to this competition. All so. around this competition. And yeah, so the that's, grand, why we, uh, that's why we gave you two weeks. <laughs> yeah. The, the highest paid will be, uh, the heaviest we'll get, but there's several other awards. You know, you don't have to be, have, you don't have to have a huge number in order to win. Anyone could win because it's a random drawing for three of those. And you know what? Maybe I've thought about people have brought it up at some point in time. Should even ask Brittany about it if she's ever tried a Jefferson deadlift, but mm, I should start yeah. a top 10 women's Jefferson mm -hmm. deadlift all time yeah, list. We should. We should. You know, that would be fun. Or maybe even to just start with the top five and just start building from there. But the problem is like right now, I'm like, I just need five to do it. And po po like, I guess this contest could be the starting point. <laughs> assuming we get like yeah. five women to even do it. I'm like, well, there you go. You're on the record until someone can mm -hmm. tag me in a video of uh, it being larger than that. Like you, you started the record book as far as I uh, were concerned that, at this that's point. That's kind of how the leaderboard almost started the first time, wasn't it? Yeah, sort of. Actually, I was able to find this weird uh, lifting federation that contests like 300 lifts, and they had a few oh, Jefferson okay. lifts in there, so I was able to put those on there as a starting point. But we've since exceeded that none of those old recorded Jefferson records are even on our ten, top 10 mm -hmm. list anymore because they've all been surpassed by because of, you know, other because of our peer pressure on the world because of that. Yeah. Honestly, that's a big part of it. <laughs> Any, uh, become a supporting member. If you're interested in it, we'd love to have you. If you've been listening for a long time, maybe you're someone that maybe you're someone that buys some merch occasionally. You'd like to support us in another way. You could become a supporting member. Maybe you're someone that buys merch a whole lot. You buy a lot of our stuff. Uh, you can still become a supporting member and continue to support that way. Maybe, maybe you're someone that doesn't buy any of our merch. Maybe you used to buy a lot of merch, but you don't anymore, but you still want to support? Supporting members right. are the way to do it. Maybe you're thinking, how is the merch buying even related to the support? Like, how is my level of merch buying and related to my supporting question. membership? Just, 
why am we have what's to the com- preface all what's the comparison with, there <laughs> with their merch with their relationship to merch then so once we have established your your merch history then we'll move then on we can talk members. about your supporting membership level yeah, yeah. uh they maybe have a family they, member that likes to buy merch you yes, could also become yes. a supporting member <laughs> i don't know if we have time for this but were you, did you say you were reading a book oh oh i did finish just, a book on the plane Okay, right. I did finish. I I can't remember if I brought this one up. Man search. For but do you meaning. need to specifically enter this uh, as a segment here if you're going to talk about well, this? Well, okay. Is this sports and books? I'll do a very. This will be a very bridge version because okay. Right. And I I went to the Nationals version. game, so we talked about sports. All right, so we got the sports. So now sports and books. We're finishing up right now. <laughs> um, I did I tell you this as a book to put on your list? Man search for meaning. I couldn't remember. No, but no, you didn't. But then someone in the Discord had said it, and I actually I've got a little list going, and I had yeah. written it down. And it's, then you are, and then you yeah, said it's one uh, of those books that comes up, yeah, you know, as one of those, uh, you know, all time books, right? And um, that's kind of what I'm. That's kind of what I want right now. So I'm like, oh yes, this fits yeah. perfectly and into a, what I want. I mean, to it's read. like 170 pages. It's such a quick right. read. Uh, but what's, I'm almost tempted to restart it because what I did is I was reading this book when I, I actually found my list. To show how much of a reading streak I was on in 2019, I was keeping track of all the books I was reading and when I finished them. Yeah. And I found my list that I had saved. And from January to June of 2019, I had read like 14 books. Like that feels like a reader that's at a that lot. point, doesn't it? That was oh yeah. I couldn't believe like it. If you're when reading I saw a that. book a month, that's a lot. Yeah, of I could books, I couldn't believe that. Like then there was there was a few audiobooks in there too, which I'm I'm counting right. in the mix, but um 14 books. I was like, damn, 14 in six months. Who the hell was that guy? I didn't, yeah. I didn't know what my best. I did 14 in a year even like, well, and actually that my best I did do 14 in a year because the, then you we, stopped we, and, never, and yeah. I looked, it was, it was the year we, when I moved into my, my new house at the time, you know, yeah, when we moved yeah. to studio 3.0 or whatever yeah. it was, we moved, everything got packed away. I unpacked the stuff. I never, never opened a book basically again after that and just quit reading. Right. Um, so I had started man search for meaning. I'd read like the first 130 pages, probably over the course of like four days or so, and yeah. then closed it, never opened it again. And we've been talking about books. I'm like, oh, I'm going on a trip. What better time to read than on vacation? So yeah. I went into the garage. I found the the tote full of books. I grabbed it out. The bookmarker was in there. I'm like, all right, <laughs> we're going to pick right up where we left off. And like, I'm reading it and I'm like, dude, I do not remember like yeah, so much of this. It. And right. what, so the, the book, it's about a guy, he gets, he gets, you know, he has to go to the concentration camps. He's, he's a Jew in Nazi Germany or Austria. I can't remember where he was now. I, I did go tying that in. I did go through the, um, did you go to the Holocaust uh, museum? Holocaust museum. Okay. Yeah. That was, yeah. I, I remember when you're in high school, your level of, uh, oh, empathy yeah. and care for everything is, is fairly low. You just don't get it. You don't have that life perspective. But even then I'm like, damn, this is pretty heavy. I remember thinking that in high school and now oh, I could see how that'd be a really tough one to go through now. It is. It is. It's, it's uh, like you go in that room that has all the shoes and everything in it. Yeah. 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 Yeah, It's It's intense. It is. It's a, it's a lot. It's heavy. Yeah. Like you get done with that one. You're like, ah, I don't even know. Can I go on with the rest of my day or right? Right. Is it okay? Right. 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 Yeah. So the, it's about this. He's a, is he a psych? psychiatrist i think he's a psychiatrist see and this is where i'm screwing myself because i the Didn't, first don't remember that the, first well the part. first like hundred the first half of the book is about him and his experience with other people in the concentration camps and then like the last third last half of the book is him afterwards and you know him and his his practice of being a psychologist or psychiatrist whatever it is but I didn't realize because it'd been so long. I didn't realize that 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 it had switched over. So I'm like reading it, like where does the camp part come out? I didn't realize I got past all that. So I did. Yeah. That was not the ideal way to read that book. Is to is to read take the a, first two thirds of it and then uh, take a four year break and then finish it. <laughs> finish up like a chapter like you'd never left it. So yeah. um, I can definitely see how that book would be very profound for a lot of people. Um, but yeah, I I definitely did not yeah, give myself that favors my the way I read it. <clears throat> Yeah, yeah I, it I is a quick, I mean, it's a to... quick read though. It's, it's a yeah. little book with, I mean, not a ton of text in the, like you can fly through that thing. Yeah. I read on, I did the same thing on flights. I was reading, you know, flights were a great time for me to read. And uh, oh, yeah. so I hammered through quite a, well, no, that's actually not, that's being <laughs> yeah. way over generous. I hammered through some of uh, 
uh, Atlas Shrugged. So I think I've read like 140 really? of the tiny little pages yes, now. That's so. a lot of, that's like, that's like, it's 10, 10% 10X of the book. That regular pages. That'd be like a thousand pages yeah. in a regular book. That's yeah. So I've read like 10% of the book and still I don't have an, it's just a story to me at, at this point, you know, I just, uh, it's okay, just, at this point, 140 pages in, do you feel like this needs to be this long or do you, do you like you're saying, get uh, on I feel with like it? I can't understand how it possibly can be. I feel like I don't understand how it possibly could be as long as it is being this much into it i mean it's not a bad book so far it's just yeah. uh it's just a, it's just a novel that i'm reading at this point but, but to only I, be 10 percent in is you know <laughs> that's a lot yeah. of books you're on page 30 i'd be like, half that's done just getting started you know that's there's right. nothing to it right yeah yeah no it's uh i'm interested i've not i don't you know i've maybe just at the very starting to be able to even pick up on where some of the symbolism could even go mm. like it's just like still it's almost like still just like introducing the characters at 150 pages in kind of yeah. is what it feels like. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. Uh, and then did you oh, also that speaking of sports and books, that's what I wanted to say. If you carry around that book, there's no conversation starter, like carrying around that book. Everyone that walked by me wanted to interrupt me and ask me what I thought of the book. Really? Yes. Like everyone wanted my, like that. I'm like, uh, or everyone's like, Oh, what are you reading? It's so it's so obnoxiously fat. It's yeah, like, who's carrying the Bible? Who's reading, right, right. <laughs> and uh, uh, the number of people that, uh, that I actually couldn't read as much as I wanted to because on the planes would want to ask me what I think of it so far. And I'm like, I don't know, I'm like 100 pages in. I can't even barely tell you what it's like, even remotely what it's about yet. So yeah, yeah. I just don't know. But on the one flight, on my last flight, though, too, other bit of interesting thing I did uh, is a kid 18 years old and uh we, he ended up asking me a lot of questions. He was a bright kid. He start, It started to him asking me about the book, but we ended up talking so long about massonomics. It was <laughs> really? probably the best flight ever. He wanted really? to know all about, uh, you know, uh, he was he's pretty, you know, he understood TikTok and social media and all that stuff, and he knew who, like, Ronnie Coleman and Michael Hearn was, uh-huh. and he go, goes to the gym a little, you know, he goes to the gym and lifts and works out, and so he was super curious about massonomics and all that stuff. So it was, uh, wow. it was a fun, like hour long massonomics discussion. Yeah, so, uh, so the, running the whole sales pitch, given the history. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. That's so that awesome. was fun. And you're going to tell me something, but have you, things. have you started meditations yet then? No, I haven't. Cause okay. I, when, when we left, I was like, it was either two things. I'm either going to really dive into this or I could probably read meditations on this trip, mm-hmm. but I really just wanted to, now I've got kind of a stranglehold on, starting uh atlas shrug so now i feel like i at some point in time i could go to meditations and feel oh, okay yeah, like yeah, i'm not you, gonna you got that you like got i'm that not gonna forget what i'm yeah right 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 so yeah i'm gonna probably gonna read that pretty soon now and maybe can give a good sports and book update on that yeah i'll be looking forward to your recap yeah i'll see if i can keep uh keep chugging i still have to finish i'm so close to being done with the scientific principles of strength training i've had that on the back burner uh, yeah, yeah. for so long um, I'll finish that one of these days here though, but I feel like at this, Oh, okay. Along those same lines, I'm probably late to the party here, but the videos that Mike Isretel does of, Oh yeah. God, the, the videos critiquing Hollywood training programs. Have you watched those ones? Uh, yeah, I've seen some of that oh, stuff. Yes. Those yes. are so funny. Those are so good. <laughs> And Mike dude, Isretel way, has some of the best stuff. Oh, it's the way just, that uh, guy is, I imagine they could, if they feed those guys, if they have like a list of just training programs for him to watch, they could probably sit down and I'm sure he could knock out like 10 of those videos in like two yeah. hours. Yeah. And those videos get so many views too. And they're hilarious too. Like he's always, oh, like talking about whoever <laughs> and fanning himself. Like he, he hams it up so much on all those. It's hilarious. Yes, he is good. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if you've ever looked at the analytics, but him being on not too long, whenever he was on mm-hmm. recently with us within the last tech week, uh, 10 weeks, that is a very popular downloaded well, episode. It is. But and the other thing I love about it though, is what he does so good is he'll be like, okay, the trainer will be like, okay, so up next we needed to get so-and-so really strong. You know, they really needed a strong posterior chain. So here we are working um, hip thrusters. And <laughs> yeah, yeah. so he'll pause the video and be like, Okay, nothing wrong with a hip thruster, but you just said your goal is to have the strongest posterior chain. Yeah. There's 50 exercises. Starting you could pick. with the hip thruster. There's 50 exercises you could pick that would hit this so much stronger. And like yeah. the way he just breaks down, like, okay, someone says we pick this exercise because of this. 
And he says, okay, well, if that was really your goal, this exercise does not hit those muscles the way you said, like, I feel like you could the justification few, he has for stuff. It's well, just yeah, like, you do, you're like I, I I, it's hard to argue with him. A lot of people could listen to those and be like, oh, actually, if that's how that works, training makes way more sense now. You know, be the time like, okay, we had him do this and we had to, they had to be really strong in every position. So we had him hold this, hold this thing. Like they're holding a sword. And he's like, or you could just swing the damn sword and get strong at moving the sword. He's like, isometrics (laughs) are almost always terrible for building strength. You know, what's good for building strength, doing (laughs) things that require your muscles to move, you know, and (laughs) Like, oh yeah, like this. I mean, people know this, but like hearing a guy explain it so because he can explain things so simple, you know, in such simple then, terms. Like concisely and just where yes. you're like, oh yeah, I guess I feel dumb for not understanding that, like you understand it. Mm-hmm. And it's funny the way he does it too. Like, yeah, those videos are those videos are great. Yeah. Pretty much all of his stuff is gold. It's you know, to me, I just uh I agree for those reasons. <laughs> yeah. So uh, become a supporting member, buy our merchandise. Remember the correlation of those two things, how important and key that is where you are. Wherever on the you're at, on merchandise, the merchandise buying, buying supporting. Spectrum, <laughs> there is a, there is a supporting level membership level for you. Yes. <laughs> yes. I suppose you could also compare uh, in the, uh, to be fair, you could compare the supporting member level to basically anything on the other access. Well, uh, and it's probably as relevant as the merchandise yeah. <laughs> thing, but probably, but I, we have a good thing going here. So yeah, <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's it. Tommy, where do they find you at? You can find me at Tomahawk underscore D. You can follow me at Tanner underscore Baird, but, uh, for the love of God, just make sure to follow Massonomics at Massonomics. See you.